All right, my bad. I am, we're one minute late. That's that's my bad. I was uh, running a little bit late today. I had to, uh, I was rushing to eat all my food, get everything ready, had to get my, uh, I'm fancy now. So I had to get my sparkling LaCroix, you know, to get me through the stream, make sure, you know, I'm hydrated. It's not a sponsorship or anything, but uh, I have grown to like uh, the water in which I once thought was terrible. But welcome to the very first episode of uh, Mastermind Academy, second episode of 2020, but first episode of Python, intro to coding with Python. We're gonna be doing some dope stuff with Python tonight. Hey everybody, good to see you here at Circle Labs. Good to see you. Um, I actually didn't make it to reInvent this year, unfortunately. I wanted to go really bad. I actually didn't make it this year for a number of reasons. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely, um, if I'm not running boot camps during that time, I'm gonna try to make it out to reInvent this year um, for sure. Um, uh, you've been off your game. Yeah, you got to get back on it. We're back on it. We're on it together. Uh, you're not the only one studying. I'm studying for some stuff too. So, uh, we can do all that together. Uh, you never got the email. Uh, so it came out really late. Uh, we ended up streaming for three and a half hours last night. Uh, people st stuck around for a while. So if you were on last night, I appreciate you sticking around. That was pretty cool. Talked about a lot of cool stuff. Um, but the email went out pretty late. Um, I will send out another one. There's going to be one going out tonight with this information, with with information from both uh, boot camps in them. Uh, so I'll definitely send that out. If not, if you don't get it after this, um, we'll check your email. It's from the email was sent from Twitch. So if you are not seeing it, uh, make sure you're you know looking through your filters and stuff because it came from Twitch. If not, shoot me a message. Uh, do it, send me a message on Twitch if you can. I think they're called Whispers or something, um, and we'll get you taken care of. There is a Discord now, so if you're comfortable with Discord, it should show up. If you're subscribed, it should show up as, a, as something that you can join. Uh, so definitely go ahead and do that. We're gonna start talking in there as well. I'm, you know, I'm getting hip to the Discord space as well, but I can get, I can pass you information there as well. So a, a little bit later on, we'll get everyone uh, locked in with the Google Classroom stuff. First day Google Classroom stuff from, uh, if you're a part of the DevOps course, um, it's pretty simple stuff, so don't sweat it. You'll have time to go over the videos and whatnot. Uh, Python stream has JavaScript scrolling in the background. Yes, that is, you're right, but uh, that's what I could find with free, uh, what is it called, free stock video. But maybe I'll make my own next time, but you're right, JavaScript scrolling in the background. That's a good catch. Good eye there. Um, our Hydro Home is, I'll check that out. I don't know, I don't, you know what? I gotta go there right now. Uh, let me see if my let me see if my uh, synergy server is working. Yes, it is. So I do have access to both of my computers right now. OK, oh, I didn't even pay attention. You guys can see this. Um, I have lowered the bit rate tonight, so um, maybe quality is a little bit worse. Maybe not. Uh, but hopefully um, we shouldn't have a, a network. Hopefully we don't have a network hiccup like we did last night. If we do. Again, bear with me. I'll be back uh, immediately or, or really soon. I have a couple of networks to choose from right now. I, I am getting Ethernet uh, very shortly, um, but uh, I, for probably for this the remainder of this week, we'll still be streaming off of Wi-Fi. So hopefully, we're good to go there. But um, roll call again. Let me know where people are, are tuning in from. People were tuning in from all over the place yesterday. We had some some people from. Uh, I think we had someone from Amsterdam and someone from Brazil. But where are you tuning in from? I'd I'd love to know. Uh, great Python, great Python typing. Yo, what's good? What's good? Um, Anansi boy. Uh, quality is good. We can still see you swole games from the gym. Working on it, you know, just trying to get rid of this belly. Um, you know, trying to trying to trying to look kind of nice this year, you know. That's one of the goals. Um cool, cool. Video quality is good. Minneapolis, Chicago, Boston, Sydney. We're gonna make a little map one day of uh we'll probably do a cool project where we can make a little little heat map of where everyone's from. Maybe I can get it from Twitch automatically. Baltimore in the house, that's what's up. Montreal, Canada, welcome. I think that's the first time I've seen Montreal, St. Louis back in the house, Philly, Philly, Maryland, uh, technically Hartford County, what's up, what's up? We got Brooklyn, Gaithersburg, Ontario. I like the, I like the Canada stuff. Maybe I'll start, um, maybe I'll, I think I'm gonna do some YouTube ads or something for the for the next uh, go around. Um, actually guys, the next, uh, this is just an announcement, the next 
I'm, I'm going to be running three sets of 12 week boot camps throughout the year. So basically 12 weeks on uh, about a month, a little more than a month off during that time. I actually will be streaming this time, I promise you, but it'll be smaller workshops uh, to dive deeper into some specific technologies. And then we'll start up another boot camp series. Same thing in between another boot camp series. Um, but the next one will be more advanced. So it'll, it'll be a much more advanced. Uh, the one at the beginning of the year will be the intro. Then we'll go into a little more advanced topics and then we'll do a we'll switch it up for the last the last uh, set up but yeah um again there will, there will definitely be more information about that must be more than some places for sure because people will definitely people from all over uh atlanta denver welcome welcome gettysburg pa welcome welcome to the stream good to see you all really excited um i'm really excited about python for one uh, this is gonna be exciting i'm excited about devops i love devops that's my thing but people are very interested in coding specifically coding my Golang workshops uh, the, for the DevOps course last time uh, were probably two, besides the engineering panel at the end, those are probably the highest viewed um, at all of them, um, those two Golang ones. So I know people are very interested in coding. We are working on a web development one. Um, you don't want me to teach web development for you. I could definitely do it. I could teach you the basics of web development. <coughs> But uh, that's not my forte. Um, working on someone pretty cool, actually, to to do that. Um, so keep an eye on that around. Uh, I guess the next the next set of streams will run in May. Um, hopefully, web development will be a part of that. Pretty sure cloud computing is going to be a part of that as well. Um, but I will definitely keep you up to speed on that. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, anyone who doesn't uh, who's new to the channel, maybe someone just tuned in. Maybe you found this on the science and technology section of Twitch. Uh, this is Mastermind Academy. This is the second time we're going through this. And back in August, we started a boot camp series. Uh, we went through twelve weeks uh, learning DevOps, which is a, which is a bunch of topics. A bunch of uh, we were, went pretty broad on the topics. Learned them. Um, learned each of them. You know, kind of high level. We didn't get to dive super deep into any of them. Uh, this one will actually be because we're focusing on one thing. For, because we're focusing purely on Python, we should be able to go a lot deeper, do some cooler stuff, uh, make it a little more practical for everyone. This is, um, this one will be, yeah, this, this, this is for this course. Uh, who's it for first off? And maybe I'm gonna hop into the slides in a little bit. I do have some slides for you. I'm not just gonna be just talking. Uh, this is just, we're still in the intro here, but um, this is for, th this course will be good for anyone who's never coded before. So if you've never coded before, we are gonna be covering all the concepts. And yeah, we're gonna be learning Python, but we're gonna be learning um, some computer science concepts, um, some basic programming concepts that kind of apply up across the board. So. If you are learning another language, this will still be pretty beneficial for you. Um, I, I did my best to make sure this is still beneficial for you. Um, and again, this is the this is the intro to coding. So we're gonna be going over a lot of things. We're gonna be building some things. Uh, we're gonna be able to use this practically. Um, and then we're gonna go into some bigger stuff through the, the middle of the year um, to kind of build on that. So we're gonna make sure we're going at a good pace. So maybe you know a lot of the stuff at the beginning. It's okay, there are a lot of people who don't. You know, if you need to step out and not participate in that, to come back in the middle so you're not bored, understand uh but i would love for you to stick around and help out people i uh, help answer some questions you know again i i may not explain things in the best way for someone uh maybe you can be that resource to help them really get over the fence with uh one of the topics so that's just what to expect on this let me um let's get going first off let me cook the little thing up here make sure we got caffeine going caffeine is going to keep my screen from going blank um this year i am streaming off of a uh laptop last time uh, back in 2019, you know, in the olden days, uh, I streamed from one computer. My my stream PC is pretty uh, pretty beefy. <coughs> it was pretty beefy back then. It's way beefier right now. But uh, one thing we learned is, although your computer can be beefy and it can do everything that you need to do, uh, your network may not be so beefy. So we actually got some times when the stream dropped out because we were downloading packages or uploading packages, you know, from S3 or, or Amazon or whatever. Uh, so we shouldn't have that problem this time because we're doing everything from this laptop. This is a System76 laptop. We're doing everything from Linux. I know it may look like a Mac to you, but it is Linux. It's beautiful. Um, one day I'll show you guys how to customize it the same way that I did. Um, so we should be good to go. So if we have any computer issues and stuff, I should be able to restart etc without losing the stream so hopefully that's going to be an improvement this year um cool any favorite advanced topics you're covering <coughs> uh for python no not really um to be honest we're going to go over the curriculum and what we're actually doing um i don't 
I wouldn't consider anything that we're doing super advanced. We're definitely going to, obviously we're going to get into object oriented programming and things like that. And again, we're going to build some real projects. Um, the, I have the projects that need to go. I need to put them on the actual website. We're going to build in, we're going to do some of the basic projects and some of the, some, some new ones that, um, I've worked out. Uh, we're going to be building like, you know, um, games like, um, like blackjack, uh, because it's a good object oriented programming, uh, exercise and it's something fun and it's something that people can understand. Maybe we'll do like a spades game too, uh, just to kind of see how you can switch that up. But we'll be building a bunch of things. Um, we won't be doing a lot of web stuff. We won't be doing a lot of Django stuff, but we'll definitely check that out. But, um, started learning Golang last month. If you like Golang, join in, um, this week and next week for the DevOps one, the one that runs on Sundays and Tuesdays. I'll give you all the information you want about Golang. I love Golang um, a lot, um, and I can give you a lot of resources for it. Uh, 8 viewers, yeah, there's a lot of people on here. I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's a lot different. You know, last time we were, you know, in the 30s, most of the time, 30s, 40s, uh, we're growing. We're definitely growing, so this is great. I love it. I love that people are, uh, I did it last night, but I want everyone who's here to give yourselves Give yourselves a hand. And my elbow's ashy. It might be a little bit ashy. But give yourselves a hand. Um, I'm proud of you for being here. One, it's Monday night. You probably have a job, school, whatever it is. But you've decided to invest in yourself. Um, and I love that. I love I love that you decided to invest in yourself. Um, 2020 is a year, hopefully, that um, we can all get better together. Um, you know, we, we can we can really build this community. I, I love tech. I love what tech can do for people. Um, and hopefully, hopefully I can, hopefully this 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 community people in the chat this group of this group of people can help you really uh, believe in what you're doing help you get to the next level um, in terms of your technical career if you want to just get into tech you want to get further along um, I'm really excited about it but again you should be proud of yourself um, I'm glad to have you um, are we using whoop I lost it I think someone asked are we using Xcode or PyCharm where was that at let me find it let me find it all right cool Xcode or PyCharm um, Great question. We will be talking about editors tonight. Um, PyCharm is an option. Uh, we won't be using Xcode at all. Um, I'm going to be pushing VS Code for you, or if anyone wants to follow along with Vim, we're definitely going to be doing a little Vim. I'm going indoctrin to indoctrinate some people tonight with Vim, but don't sweat that. We'll talk about editors for sure. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, Terry, good to see you. Good to see you online. Is anyone else hearing music over the speaking? You should be hearing music. If it's too loud, let me know. Um, I'll turn, I'll, I'll cut it down if it's really bothering you. Um, just let me know. I can definitely update those levels, um, for sure. Um, goal setting. Yep. If, any, if anyone didn't see any goal setting, the goal setting stream, we did a goal setting stream on the first, it should still be up. You should go back and watch it. You pass. Yes. Congratulations. Cloud on feet uh, on fleek. Uh, the AWS solutions architect associate this morning. That's dope. Uh, so I'm a technical lead and you, you now have a cert, uh, certification that I do not have. And I love AWS. Um, I am going for the professional. Um, but I think I'm going to grab my associate in the meantime, just for fun. I do have a, a developer one, but that's awesome. Congratulations. That's dope. Everyone, please congratulate cloud on fleek. That's a, that's a super dope accomplishment way to start off 2020. I'm very proud of you. That's awesome. Um, I saw a YouTube comment about this Python course. It's not to check it. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. I forgot. I think I posted it on somebody's channel, um, as a resource, a lot of stuff on here. Um, oh man, y'all are, y'all are moving in the chat. Might have to, might have to slow it down. Vim for life. Love it. We're definitely gonna be doing that. VS code is great. I love VS code. Um, I'll definitely let you, I like that. Anybody in Atlanta that wants to get together. Yes. If you know anyone who would benefit from something like this, like, I'm not looking for, I'm not pressed over the views or anything. You guys should watch it together. Make some, make some watch parties, find some meetups, people around you, um, watch it together with people, you know, where you can ask each other questions. You can hop into the Slack, hop into the discord, ask each other questions, man. Like I, I really, really want people to be able to build a community around this. So we're, we're just here to learn. Um, it's going to be exciting because I learned so much from doing these. Like every like people are so smart. Like I don't know it all. Um, and I love the 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 amount that I learned from interacting where you guys have no problem correcting me. I love it. You guys have no problem, you know, um teaching me better ways to do things. And I love it. So that's awesome. Uh I used to swear by Pie Charm. Pie Charm's Pie Charm's dope. I'm gonna introduce everyone to all these things. Uh Pie Charm is dope, but VS Code is also dope. Alex Stan started AWS training a few days ago. I AWS is my favorite. I love cloud computing. Um, it's my forte. I'm a, I'm an infrastructure guy. So uh, I, that's the thing I like the most. So I am developing a, whole, a full AWS course, which should run mid year. 
um, Zero to Hero, 12 weeks AWS should teach you everything you need to know. <coughs> Hopefully it's good enough for you to pass the Solutions Architect Pro, I'm hoping. I mean, Solutions Architect Pro, you need to know, you know, have some hands-on experience, but the goal is to make the content good enough for people to be able to pass the Pro. And if you're not ready for the Pro, for sure the Associate, uh, all the Associates to be honest. So we're gonna be working on that. Um, where's the Discord link? Great question. I just, start, I just set up the Discord like two days ago. I haven't done anything with it. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you should be able to like find it through the Twitch integrations. A bunch of people already found it, so you guys are no more than me. Uh, I'll get, I'll figure out the link. Uh, maybe before this is over, I'll, I'll pass that along. Um, do you use uh, Kite with v with Vim? I do not. I do not use Kite with Vim. Stopping in briefly. Welcome, welcome. Looking forward to catching up tomorrow. Dope. Cool. All right. Um, Mess around with AWS last month and accidentally cost myself forty dollars. Yes, so if you haven't already paid it, reach out to their support. They will they will cut that bill. If you tell them you're just trying to learn and you forgot to you know deprovision something, forgot to tear down some infrastructure, let them know. They will pull it off of your bill for you. Um, that's pretty nice. Crystal Discord, like to yeah, apps one thousand percent. Anyone who wants to be a mod uh, is automatically. If you ask me, I will let you be a mod until you do something to lose your privileges. But uh, I would love for anyone who wants to help. Maybe you guys can show me a little bit later um, how to how I can make you a mod or what. Um, but I would definitely love to 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 learn and to let you do whatever you need to do with it. Because again, it's our this is our community. It's not my community. This is our community. Um, yeah, and we're trying to make it the best that we can. So cool. Let's pull up our slides for tonight and let's get going. Give you a little preview there. So the beginning of this, if you're part of the Python course first, let me announce that I, I don't know. Some people are here for the Python course, but what you don't know is that I'm also running a DevOps course on DevOps is on Sundays and Tuesdays and Python will be on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, I'll be trying to run, uh, sub there'll be subscriber only uh, office hours on Fridays. It, we're calling the office hours on Overwatch. We'll be playing some games. We'll do some we'll do some cool stuff. We might play some Jackbox, ga Jackbox games so you guys can play too. But any questions, anything that we're working on throughout the week that you didn't get your uh, questions answered for, if you just have questions, um, it'll be a subscriber only stream again on, on Fridays. Not every Friday, probably every other Friday starting next week. I won't be doing it this week, but probably starting next week. Um, so again, another reason to subscribe. Also, if, uh, to subs if you subscribe, you get access to a Google, a Google Classroom. We have a Google Classroom with some extra resources. Some, uh, again, we have there's videos and there's articles, there's uh, exercises, there's projects, there's labs, bunch of stuff in there. New content will be delivered each week in the Google Classroom. Um, and I'll be able to, things that, um, things that need feedback, we'll be able to give feedback on. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely subscribe. Hopefully, again, hopefully in the next week or two, I might have a I might have an announcement for you all um, for anyone who's who can't um, subscribe right now. Um, hopefully, we're we're gonna do our best to get everyone and anyone who wants to be a part of it subscribed. So just working through some things, um, and I will definitely let you. Um, I'll definitely give you guys some information with that. Could you post an invite in chat um, to to Discord? Yeah, I'll definitely get that. Um, remind me like. Remind me when we get done with the slides and we'll definitely do that. Um, where are the slides located? The slides will be, the slides are located in the Google Classroom. Um, actually, yeah, let me just send you a link to the slides if you wanna follow along. I'll go ahead and share them with you. Get shareable link, anyone can view. There's anyone at Mastermind. specific people, anyone with the link. All right, sharing link. We're gonna go ahead and copy link. Let's, ho I hope this copies up. Yep, I think we learned that last night. So if you wanna follow along with the slides, definitely go ahead, but they are included in the Google Classroom. Uh, and I'll send out the Google Classroom links for this afterwards, after it's done. Um, I don't want you messing around with it right now. Uh, we should pay attention to what we're doing tonight. So let's get started. Introduction to coding with Python. Tonight's the overview. It's syllabus day. We're gonna be learning about what we're gonna be learning over the next 12 weeks. Uh, what's expected of you? Um, you know, uh, where you can reach out for questions, where you can reach out for any um, any advice, uh, where, where we're gonna be talking about things. Um, 
what to do if we miss a if we miss a class for any number of reasons. I get sick or something. Uh, there, Fridays will be makeup days. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, then we'll start. We'll hop into it tonight and we'll get uh, introduce the program and we'll do some um, some basics of programming. We'll talk about uh, some of the tools and things that we're going to be using throughout the course. Um, yeah, so let's get going. So who am I? Why should you listen to me? And I should have updated this. Um, I did not update this. Well, let's go back. Um, a lot of this, again, you probably see most of this yesterday. If you're part of it, <clears throat> I haven't updated it much. But my name is Aaron. Uh, you can call me AA Ron if you've seen the skit. Uh, I, that's cool with me. I, I like it. Um, but yeah, I'm a DevOps engineer by trade. So I do do this uh, daily. Um, this is my day job. I'm a DevOps and I'm a technical lead. Uh, currently, I work at a company here in Baltimore called uh, Fearless. And um, actually, sorry. My... my hair and things too tight um but um yeah i work out of a software company here in baltimore called fearless we do mainly government work uh we you know we're changing the way government does things we do, we do digital transformations uh inside the government it's pretty dope uh, i really like it here um but there's more information about that later as well but uh yeah i have about eight years of experience of industry experience i have a little more experience working but um about eight years of devops like infrastructure uh software development experience uh but again i am the technical lead here as well for my project um and i'm not the devops technical lead i'm a i'm a technical lead for uh, for an application an application team um so yeah so we build uh, it's a node uh javascript um a javascript node react uh, application all in aws we do some some container stuff serverless stuff uh mutable infrastructure stuff so it's pretty cool uh definitely pretty cool so you'll learn you can learn more about that in devops devops is really my thing uh infrastructure aws that's the stuff that i'm super passionate about um there so uh yeah i'm a 90s baby i think that's important i think it's important to tell you that for a number of reasons uh some of those reasons are the jokes that i make the memes that i use throughout this some of the things that i'll say uh i used to when i used to stream uh i used to stream from my house um actually i'm actually currently out of a co-working space now um for a number of reasons but i used to have like pokemon images of pokemon off to the right and people were like oh what are the pokemon for it's like man look Pokemon was my life. I grew up with Pokemon, uh, were very important to me. You know, I had, I had the starter Pokemon there, um, some cool images, but I'm a 90s baby born in 90. Uh, I think that's important to know. Uh, I love cars and motorsports. Uh, I, I watch maybe the past two years, I've been really into F1, um, other, some other racing leagues, other racing series. I love to drive, um, had a WRX that I just got rid of. Uh, I have a, you know, city cars, my Fiat, I have a Fiesta ST uh, that I'm doing a little bit of work too, but I do a lot of back roads driving. Um, my plan is to get a full on race car, to build a full on race car. That's why I got rid of the WRX. I want to get a truck, a trailer, uh, build a full on race car and do some, uh, some maybe grid life time attack series or something like that. So uh, I love motorsports, it's something I love to do. Um, I'm a gamer. I'm definitely a gamer. I grew up a gamer, you know, Halo 2, all that stuff. But right now I only play Overwatch for the most part. I have a bunch of games. I'm trying to actively in 2020 play all the games that I bought. Spent lots of money on games, but I need to play them. Uh, just like everyone else, Steam sales, you know, we, we're in the tech industry. You have a, you have enough money to buy stuff during Steam sales. So I buy stuff during Steam sales. Um, I need to stop buying stuff during Steam sales. Um, so I, I, I do play games. If you want to ever play any games, let me know. I'll send out my links for Blizzard. I'll send out my links for Steam and all the other stuff. Uh, but I do like some games. Uh, I watch movies, love horror movies specifically. I watch a lot of movies, love horror movies. I put in here, I forgot to update this one, but I've recently gotten a horror podcast as well. Listen to one right now called The Black Tapes. Pretty dope. I I, I like the way uh, audiobooks and podcasts are. I'm, I'm new to the podcast game and I love the way that a uh, horror comes through on those things. So I do like horror stuff. Uh, I'm an Android and Spotify user over iOS and Apple Music. Again, that's very important. I, I think that tells you a lot about who I am. Uh, pancakes over waffles, always. There was some debate about it last night, but everyone who said waffles are, are better is wrong. Um, we, I, I will admit, people did correct me. I, talk, I, I tried to use the fact that there's an international house of pancakes to prove why pancakes are better, but then everyone told me there's a waffle house, which there is. It's just not nationwide, like I believe IHOP is. Again, that's a bold, broad statement that I don't know to be true, but I'm gonna say it anyway on the internet because uh, right now you're not about to, uh, nobody's about to check me on that. It's nationwide, it's better, uh, for sure. Pancakes over waffles, dogs over cats. I have a Rottweiler, uh, 100 
96 pound Rottweiler. She was 120, lost weight. Um, sometimes you'll see her. Sometimes I'll bring her in here. She she's allowed in the building. Um, she'll hang out with us every now and then. Um, yeah, she hang out with us every now and then. Maybe maybe you guys will get to see her. But I do love dogs over cats as well. I've had cats before. <coughs> dogs are my favorite. But yeah, now you know a little bit about me. You know, if, 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 if anything in there resonates with you, I love to have a conversation about it. Last night, we have a lot of conversation about motorsports, talked about games with people. So, you know, I want to know what y'all like to do. Um, I would love to find out, you know, things we have in common for sure. Um, Thug Muffin asks, we're going to do a quick how to install Python. Yes, we will be doing a quick how to install Python. A window, sometimes you have to edit path to get Python to work. Yes. Um, we are, uh, we are gonna get Python installed. Uh, Python can be tricky. Um, Windows, Python's usually fine. Max is usually the problem. Now the Python 2 is end of life. I think Mac has done some things to make sure we're good there, but uh, we will be doing that. Definitely might trip some people up for sure. Thank you for calling that out. We'll make sure to keep that in mind. Do you know about Fox Shocks? Absolutely, I know about Fox Shocks. Um, generally, I see, I see Fox Shocks in terms of like trucks though like uh, truck shocks and things. I like trucks as well. I would love a Raptor. That would be an amazing tow vehicle if I could afford it. But yeah, um, I do know about Fox shocks. I've, you know, I've modified some cars pretty extensively. So, um, cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. Uh, streaming services of WRC. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. New Mutants trailer looks good. It does. It looks great. I'm definitely going to be able to see it. Definitely going to be able to see it um, as soon as it comes out. Um, Dr. Death is wondering. I'll check that out. I'm gonna save that. Attention. Logger the pancakes, but I'll check out Waffle House Index. The female is. I'll check that out. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll give I'll give Waffle House a chance. Waffle House is not better than I have. All Waffle Houses. So all Waffle Houses are are uh, are suspect, and I, I appreciate that. I understand. I'm not saying waffles are bad. I'm not saying Waffle Houses are bad. I'm saying that pancakes are superior to waffles i'm not i'm not a waffle hater i knew this was going to cause problems but i'm not a waffle hater I, I do love waffles especially belgian waffles they're my thing you know i'm cool with the egos but if i can have a pancake i prefer a pancake <coughs> i love to see that y'all love some horror movies too so that's good and i'm not someone who watches horror movies and doesn't get scared i get real scared uh, but i love that i love i i love the fact that i'm that i'm scared of horror movies that makes it more fun so i do get scared um yo this isn't the devops boot camp it isn't this is not the devops boot camp this is the python boot camp the devops boot camp is sunday and tuesday you didn't miss anything though don't sweat it every a lot of stuff we're going over tonight is uh overlaps this first week there's a lot of overlap between the devops course and the python course so don't sweat it uh last night yeah you missed you Everything we went over last night is what we're going over tonight uh, for the most part. So don't sweat it. You're going to miss some stuff about what DevOps is, but you can definitely go back and check that out uh, for sure. Um, cool. All right. You know a little bit about me. Excellent. Let's move on a little bit. So what time is it? Cool. 828. We're good. Uh, oh, I didn't tell. I, I don't think I told anyone uh, how long these are going to be. So the goal is to make these uh we're trying to get everything done in two hours. Last night, we got everything done in two hours, but we continued answering questions and stuff. Last night, we streamed for three and a half hours. Uh, but the goal is, I want to respect your time. I want to get the content, the main content, I'm trying to get out the door in two hours. So eight to 10 is what you can expect. Oops, let's go back. Eight to 10 is what you can expect. Um, hopefully, you know, uh, there, there will be some lessons that might go over. Um, but again, it'll be up and available for you to watch later. I understand if you can't watch to the end, um, but I want, you, I want you to know what to expect. 10 o'clock is when I'm gonna try to get you out of here almost always. If it's gonna take longer, and I know it's gonna take longer early on, I'll let you know immediately. But Twitch intro, anyone who's new to Twitch, I know a lot of people know about Twitch, uh, but Twitch is a gaming platform, or traditionally is a gaming platform. It's been expanded over the years to do more things. There's some talk shows on here. There's some ASMR, AMSR stuff on here. There's some just talking stuff on here. There's a lot of different stuff. There's art on here now as well. Uh, that people do some live, live coding on here as well. So we'll be hosting some people sometimes so you can see some of the other cool stuff people are doing on Twitch. But um, why are we using Twitch? We're using Twitch because one is interactive. Uh, I love the interactivity, the, the interactivity of Twitch and other platforms like Twitch, other streaming platforms. It allows me to be able to one teach you what you want to learn. Like it allows us to pivot, you know, off course um, rather than just watching a video of me talking about Docker or something. We can you can ask the questions you need to really help you understand it. Um, there's 
there's there's things like polls there's uh, you guys can help each other out in the chat there, a lot of stuff can happen organically um out of this so the, again the interactivity of twitch is why I, i'm doing it on here again as opposed to pre-recording courses or something like that i think twitch is a great platform to be able to reach people uh, the discoverability of twitch i want people uh especially kids teenagers who um who are already on the platform watching fortnite etc uh to accidentally discover stuff like this discoverability is important um i want people to come across this um and 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 maybe you know uh, start to believe that this is something they can do with their lives that they can get into tech um and they can really make a name for themselves they really can make you know a living for themselves change their lives uh, for sure so that's another reason but again the community aspect of twitch as well as the interactivity there's so much you can do again polls like i can do quizzes with you guys a bunch of stuff like that so that is why we're using twitch twitch has a lot of cool things like you see people right now typing in an exclamation point in a word uh if you look underneath the video if you're new to twitch there should be a, a chat command window uh that can show you some of the things you can do to get information about the channel. There'll be some self-service. There'll be some things you can do uh, so that you don't have to ask me uh, things. I don't have to stop during the stream so you can get some of that information. Again, things like what I'm using, what we're doing, uh, links to certain things. You can get that information yourself. And again, I love that Twitch uh, allows for things like that. So that is why we're using Twitch. I had so many people ask me why Twitch. And again, it's it's. I think it's fun. I think this is where people are. Um, yeah, and, and it's cool. So ignore everything you see on here. Well, not everything you see on here. I don't know why I didn't update this. Um, I didn't update this. This is not a link. This is not a link right here. Um, the schedule actually, let me post it in. If you go to academy.mastermind.io, we'll make this a little bit bigger. I don't know, it's already big. Um, for Python, the Google Calendar, I'm gonna copy this link. I'll paste it here. This is a link to the Google Calendar. You can also get it from academy.mastermind.io. This is where the syllabus is, but this is gonna be um, just a, a Google Calendar link to the what, like the dates that we're gonna be streaming. This is the one that's specific to Python. There is one on the DevOps page as well to get that one. Um, yeah, so that's where you can go to get the schedule. This used to be a thing. It was ugly, it was gross. We're just gonna use Google Calendar because it's better than what we had and maybe we'll build a new one later. Um, also, the dates, the dates are on this curriculum. So we go to Python. The dates are here. So today is January 6th. So you can also check out this if you want to know what the dates are. Um, but how do we, how are you going to get in touch with me? So on Twitter, Twitter, I use Twitter probably the most. Instagram, LinkedIn, you can find me at mastermind.io. So uh, I mean, mastermind does not have an I in it. So it's master M N D I O. Follow me on all those social media platforms. If you want to uh, get in touch with me, that's where I put out most of the information about a lot of things. So if there's ever a change or something, I will put them out on all those platforms. First, <coughs> I will put it on the site as well. Um, and then I'll be messaging people in Slack as well as the discord. Again, this course stuff is coming. Either you'll have the discourse stuff by Wednesday. Um, next next time we stream, you'll have the discourse stuff. You'll have it tomorrow, probably, if you're doing the DevOps stuff. Um, but you can also email me, abricks at mastermind.io. Uh, a bunch of people sent me their resumes yesterday. Um, something I'm trying to do with Mastermind um, is, uh, Mastermind is also, it has become, from the last stream, um, one of the gripes I have is with uh, talent agencies or, or recruitment companies, um, kind of how they do things. Um, I've had a lot of recruiters try to get me jobs for things that um, I don't do um, at all. They've submitted for jobs that they're trying to fill seats. Uh, they don't know what they're hiring for, things like that. So um, I kind of, I really want to be an advocate for engineers. Like the goal here is to help build engineers and really advocate for them. So uh, I am working on getting people's jobs. So if you're interested in trying to find a job, um, send me a resume. Let's talk. Let's find out exactly what you want exactly what you want. Um, so I know, um, I'm not just trying to, you know, put you in somewhere. Um, but I would love to help people find places that work for them, find companies who want to work with people who are, you know, trying to grow in their careers in tech. Um, but yeah, just shoot me your resumes to this, to this email. Um, we'll have a, we're actually building an app uh, and, um, uh, a platform to be able to intake resumes a little more. We're trying to make a, a, a really transparent recruitment process. Hate when you sit in a, your resume, you don't hear anything back for weeks. Like we want people to know good or bad, uh, exactly what's going on. We want people to get genuine feedback on things. Um, so we're just trying to set up a platform for that. Cause again, the goal is, the goal is man, just to, you know, tech can be life-changing for people. Let's, let's help people do all that stuff. Let's help people get jobs. Let's help them navigate it. Uh, let's, let's advocate for engineers, man. Everyone's not, everyone doesn't know how to advocate for themselves. 
um you know and we'll um we'll definitely be helping people do that yes uh there will be remote work for sure um am i a one-man man team um i'm a one-man team i'm i'm a officially a one-man team um i do have partners i do have people that i'm working with um no one is on board 100 percent yet you know everyone's got jobs uh, but i I'm not a one-man team. The operation is not one-man team, but I'm the only official mastermind kind of employee right now. Um, but that that will be changing um, pretty soon. But yeah, yeah, this is all a one-man show for the most part right now, um, for sure. Uh, U.S., Canada, international work. So right now, it's probably going to be U.S. Uh, for now. Um, the, the jobs are going to be located in the U.S. That doesn't mean people aren't going to be open to to people who do not ex uh, reside in the U.S. Um, but I'm open to international work. I still need to find out the legal ramifications on on how things like that work. But again, I, I'll I'll have all that. You, you can go to Mastermind IO. So if you take off the academy, go to Mastermind IO. You can find out a little bit more about uh, what what I'm doing with that. But yeah, uh, so def definitely reach out to me there. Shoot, shoot me your resume. I'll reach out to you. We can talk. Find out exactly what you're looking for, and we'll see what we can do. I'm not promising anyone any jobs, but my goal is to help you uh, to really to really help you try to get a job. So cool. Um, that's how you can reach out to me. Now let's talk about what I want you to take away from this. Like what, maybe we'll talk about why I'm doing it and what I want you to take away from it. So one, people always ask me why I'm doing this. Um, again, tech has been super beneficial for me. Um, I'm, I'm again, I'm a nineties baby. I'm coming up on the 30th year of my life. I, I hate to say it sometimes. So I'm not 30 yet. I'm 29. I'll be 30 in March. Uh, but for me, tech uh kind of something that something i kind of fell into like i you know I, I didn't do too well in college and i don't know i've always kind of been into tech but um i took a pretty low paying tech job out of out of college um and i was like oh this is cool like there's jobs in this and it's something i'm that i like um something that you can learn on your own um i'm kind of i do like to i like to learn things on my own so it, it was a, it was a good feel to be able to kind of grow at home in so super nice uh but it's really it's allowed me to do a lot like it, it, you know it's allowed me to do a lot in in my 20s um and i see how the the, the industry is starving for decent talent uh there's there's over 700,000 unfilled tech jobs in the united states alone um and People just aren't going into tech as fast as we think. We think people are going into it, but um, there, yeah, there are a lot of boot camps and stuff, but people are going in and dropping out. And I mean, people, every company nowadays is a tech company, to be honest. No matter what you do, you're a tech company. Um, you have a tech aspect and the jobs, the, the skills that are needed to help people grow, help companies grow, um, Again, there just there just aren't enough people to fill those jobs, and so that means there's so much opportunity out here for anyone who wants to learn. So the goal with Mastermind is anybody who wants that opportunity, anyone who wants to learn, you know, technical engineering, any aspect. Like I want to be able to, to provide that, and, and maybe I don't need to be teaching it, um, teach every. I can't teach you everything, but the goal is to start learning machine learning and have someone come teach machine learning and web development, and everything, because there's so many places in tech to get into. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just I want people to be able to capitalize uh, on all the opportunity that's out there right now because there's so much of it. Um, and for a lot of people, it's life changing for, you know, for me, the the, type, the kind of money, the kind of opportunity that's out here uh, with tech is it's really is for me like it's 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 amazing. Um, and I'm hoping other people can find exactly that. Um, this is the wrong slide for Python. Oh, yes, this is. Am I on the right thing? Hold on. Let me go back. Maybe this is the one that I wanted. Good call, but maybe I didn't update it. Um, either way, um, this stuff fits. Did I just copy this over without changing it? Oh, let me see. Let me make sure. No, because we have the coding stuff at the bottom. I didn't change this slide. That's my bad. That's an oversight. But doesn't matter. We're about to talk about what we want. So primary, I do not want you to understand. Let's change it. Let's change it on the fly right now. Strong understanding of DevOps concepts and cultures. That's not what I want from you. I want you to have a strong understanding um, of programming and computer science concepts. Cool. Uh, that's the first thing I want you to have. So. 
the goal of this is not to learn Python. It is, you you will learn Python. You absolutely will learn Python. If your goal is, if you, if you have some of the stuff and your goal is to learn Python, we will be learning Python. But the goal I want you to have is a strong understanding of computer science and programming topics, uh, uh, concepts. That's what's important so that you can take this and learn more than just Python. Now, we're gonna dive deeper and deeper into Python and we're gonna use Python to do a lot, but I don't necessarily want you to, the end goal is not to learn Python, is to have a strong understanding um, of programming and computer science concepts. Um, cool. Two, I want you to understand um, how to use um, code to solve problems. So the whole reason that people hire you to be a programmer, to the whole reason people want you to know uh, tech, uh, to want you to know how to program, <coughs> is though that you can solve problems with it. Sorry for the cough. I'm a, I'm still I'm at the tail end of a of a of a Christmas Day sickness. So sorry about that. Um, but um, yes, the reason why companies will hire you, the reason why the salaries are so high, the reason why there's such a big boom for this is because you can solve huge problems using code. You can solve uh, worldwide problems using code. So I, I want you to pick up these tools. I want you to realize that, that all code is, is giving you a bunch of tools. They'll give you a hammer, they'll give you nails, they'll give you screwdrivers, and you need to learn, you need to learn how to use those things to solve a problem. So I want you, to learn how to uh, understand how to use code to solve problems. That is number two. Number three is I want you, well, actually that everything else actually might go. Um, actually, I do want you to, I want you to understand, um, this is the last primary. I, I think this is more of a primary than secondary. I just think that this top one is just more important. But I want you to understand um, Python, comma, and its uses. So at the end of this, I want you to really understand uh, the kind of the ethos of the ethos of Python, uh, what it's for and its uses. Um, what it, like what are people are using it for now, which you could use it for. I want you to understand where it uh, exists, kind of in the in the whole world of software engineering. Because um, again, you can use it for a lot of things. It's a general purpose language, uh, so that's what I want you to understand. Now, the secondary stuff is all the same. The, the secondary stuff for all of the boot camps will always be the same. And honestly, they're second. They're the secondary takeaways because they're not the main purpose of this boot camp. But these are. These, though they're secondary, they're super important, almost more important, which is really weird to say. Uh, a little bit of oddity there, there's some catch-22 there, but um, uh, the first thing is I want you to have an understanding of how to approach learning new concepts and technologies. So in tech, tech moves fast. There is a new technology every day. Uh, again, we went from Python 2 to Python 3, Python 2. Uh, you guys just met the Python 2 train. Uh, it is end of life as of January 1st, even though they're going to be doing a final release in like June or something. Super weird. Super weird. I don't know what they're doing with that. But um, I want you to start to pick up how to learn new technologies here. Uh, again, this one's a little bit bigger for DevOps because we'll be touching a lot of technologies. But I'm gonna teach you how to apply how we're learning stuff here, to apply it to other languages, to apply it to other learning other technologies, et cetera. So cool. Uh, number two, huge one. I want you to I want you to become uh, at peace with being confused or lost. So there's actually I love this song. This song started for this because we can we can slow it down a little bit. You will for sure get lost. You will one thousand percent be confused. Uh, and that's okay. It is okay to be lost and confused. Um, what I want you to learn how to do during this time is to learn how to take that, learn how to uh, continue to take in the information, you know, as we're going through it. I want you to learn how to write down the things that uh, you really didn't understand. I want you to, to, to learn when to ask questions, when to wait and try to find the answer yourselves. Again, it's a balancing act. I'm not expecting you to know it day one, but over this, you will be lost, you will be confused, and that is okay. People like, I, I mean, I've been in the industry for a little while, we're lost every day. Uh, but what we've learned is how to 
how to navigate when being lost. Uh, when we're dropped into a problem and we're completely lost, we've learned how to find our bearings. We've learned how to take a step back and figure out what to do to get to a solution, um, even if we have no idea um, what that what that thing might be. So um, I'll show you how to use your resources. Um, I'll show you how to use your community to be able to find those things. So get comfortable with being lost. So cool. I love it. This is a perfect song for that. I really liked it. Felt felt, felt good there. Um, Whoa. Um, next one, this kind of goes in place with that, but the realization that nobody knows it all, um, which is big. So this is the number one thing there. I, I did a video on YouTube on imposter syndrome. This is something that leads to imposter syndrome, but there's this false belief that like, there's all these people who know everything. No, uh, that's not true. Um, a lot of people have, you know, have seen a lot. So yeah, I know more than you not because I'm smarter than you, but simply because I've seen more than you. And if you take the time, if you try, if you start experiencing the stuff, you start taking it in, um, you'll one day be the same way. Um, even if just give yourself a month, like, like I want you to take this first month. I want you to participate, you know, twice a week. I want you to add in some time after this. We're gonna talk about the time commitment that I'm looking for you to add after this or outside of this. But like really reflect at the end of the month on how much you learned and then reflect on how much more you know than you knew at the beginning or how much more you know than someone who maybe is just learning or someone who doesn't know tech at all. And you really start to realize like, yeah, like, yeah, I learned all this stuff. Wasn't that hard. But like, I know vastly more than people who haven't touched this stuff because I've spent time seeing more and more. So no one knows it all. Um, you won't know it all and it's and that's okay um and again that ties into being to, that, that'll help you be at peace being confused or lost uh i really 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 want you to believe have a strong belief that tech is for you and that you can thrive in it um i man everyone i think that the the world has done a bad job media has done a bad job of showing people what tech is uh, everyone thinks that you got to be Mark Zuckerberg or, uh, you know, shows like uh, movies like The Matrix or shows like um, uh, Mr. Robot make you think you got to be this super crazy smart person to be in tech. Not true at all. Again, I'm here teaching you this because I've seen a lot of stuff, not because I'm super smart. I, I mean, I've put in the work to just be around tech and I've, I take it in and someone else taught me what I'm teaching you. And I'm just reiterating to you what I've seen. Um, and so like, you don't need to be this crazy genius, uh, to do this stuff. It's not, it is, I promise you, yes, you do use these things to do rocket science, but this isn't rocket science. Most of the work, uh, there are jobs where you gotta be crazy smart. There are jobs where you need to be top, super crazy top tier. Um, but a vast majority of them are not a vast majority of them are someone who needs, you know, fu some functionality on a website modified, or they need to make sure that their website can serve you know a thousand people a day and that's okay um but yeah it, it's it's you have a place in tech you i promise you you can do it again there's a million places to get into tech but i want you to believe that you can do it um and that you can thrive in it and then as everyone would love uh, i want you to learn some proper dope meme usage we'll definitely be using it in the slack uh, a lot of my slides have memes on them but i need you to learn the language of uh of your peers memes are the language of programmers of of tech people um i feel like more memes are shared in slack uh than on reddit um i mean they're stolen from reddit <clears throat> but i feel like slack is the best meme in gif sharing place it is gif it's not gif i don't care what the creator says it's gif and again I don't like to speak in a lot of absolutes, but I'll speak in absolute here and let you know that GIF is correct. Everything else is wrong. Cool. That's what I want you to take away. Pretty simple. Those secondary ones are pretty important. Besides that, again, this is a, again, this, this class is, it's a Python course, definitely a Python course, but it's a, it's an introduction to programming course. It's an introduction to computer science course. Right, let's take a break real quick. That was a lot. Let's, uh, I don't know if anyone asked any questions. I've seen a lot of uh, of chat outreach. So let's see what you guys are talking about. Let's take a break so that you can um, not have to take in information for too long. I know people's attention spans are low, so mine is pretty low, so. All right. Do you know what overflow hidden means? Um, I'm not sure what you are talking about there. Oh, scroll bar is hidden, yeah. 
Okay. Do you do any outreach or share experience with the young people in Baltimore City's public schools? It would be so dope for you to share. I would love to do that. Um, I actually was trying to plan out this like Baltimore City school tour. Um, I would love, I absolutely would love to. Um, I don't know. I have a couple people that I know who are in the Baltimore City school system. If you know anyone I can reach out to, I would love to participate in that. Yes, I, I, I would absolutely love to go speak to any young kids. I've, I've done some stuff with some organizations around the city. Um, there's a cool one uh, called Empower. I think Empower might be nationwide, um, but there's, they're here in Baltimore as well. But I would love to. Um, that's that's the stuff that I love to do. Just just. You know, I'll do I'll do sessions. I'll do, I do some GoBridge workshops, teach people coding languages and stuff for free. Um, so if anyone has any ways for me to get in anywhere and do that, I would love to. Um, use Python to call Bash scripts and only that. Uh, yeah, you can you can you can do that. Um, I like to just use Bash because I'm a Linux guy, but uh, yeah. Mm, let's see. In the max for live, I have no idea. Yeah, no idea there. Uh, one thing I like is the idea of displaced learning, taking something you're familiar with uh, and marrying it to something you're not. I like that's impressive. Um, it's different for each individual, but those associations are how our brains work. And from what I've come to understand, yes, that is man, uh, WKT dev. That is, I like that. I'm copying and pasting that right now into my Google Keep. I would like to dive deeper into that. That is really cool. Uh, displaced learning. I love, see, I love concepts like that. I love things that I can dive into a little bit more that'll help me think, that'll help me grow, that maybe can help other people grow as well. Um, also on here, we're gonna be doing some, if you're subscribed, we're gonna be doing some uh, some mob programming, um, some pair programming, but uh, some mob programming on here as well. I'll, show you, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about what that is, but I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, and it's something I would love for you guys to take back. I, it's something that someone here at Fearless taught me, and I would love for you guys to take it back to your teams or whatever if you've never done mob programming. A lot of us have done pair programming, but uh, just something that I thought about that I didn't want to forget about. That's going to be cool. I'm glad you know how to pronounce GIF. Thank you. I'm glad people are on the same page as me. Uh, are we going to use Ubuntu for this course? So you can use whatever you want. I'll teach you how to use whatever you want. I use Pop OS. Um, Oops, hold on, let me close the door really quick. So I use Pop OS. Um, well, let's open it back up. But um, it is Ubuntu, ba uh, it's based off of Ubuntu with some extra stuff. Uh, again, there's a company called System76. They make Linux laptops. So I've been dealing with Linux for a long time um, and I just had to give them a chance because like, I can't tell you how many times I've installed Linux on a laptop and I had to fight with the graphics card or fight with the Wi-Fi card or something. And um, they have a whole team who like works on firmware and, and stuff for their hardware. Um, so it makes it super easy. So I like this laptop that I'm running off of. Uh, it's pretty powerful. I've never had to deal with any like weird oddities with the hardware or anything like that. It kind of just works. They have their own, again, team pushing firmware and stuff. So Pop OS is there, is their OS. You can go download it. Uh, works really well. Again, it is a basically a reskin Ubuntu with some extras to help um, administer their machines. But uh, yeah, so I'll be doing everything off of an Ubuntu based distro. If you want to follow along uh, with Linux, um, I do recommend an Ubuntu based distro. I just locked, forgot my SU password. Um, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I like guess sudo is great. You can you can cheat and you can sudo sue. Um, but yeah, is that a regular size can? Oh, yes. This is this is a regular size can. I'm maybe my hands look huge. I don't know. I looks like Andre Giant holding a beer. Yeah, I don't know. It's a regular. Uh, what is this? Twelve ounce can like. It will be like a Coke can, but it's LaCroix again because I'm fancy. Let me. Ah, that wasn't as refreshing as I thought it was going to be. It's a little bit warm now. Um, so come to Cherry Hill. I'll come to Cherry Hill. I would love to come to Cherry Hill. There's a lot of opportunity in Cherry Hill for people to kind of get into stuff like this. Um, yeah, I would love to come to Cherry Hill. Let me know. I have a nonprofit in Baltimore that does tech uh, youth outreach. Reach out to me um, with WJ Sanders, please. I would like. Send me all this stuff. I love this stuff. Reach out. We'll definitely get something set up. We'll definitely do something. I uh, meet up one day. I'll be ha I'll be living in Maryland in a few months. Dope. Reach out, Bug Muffin. Um, 
definitely we we i love to me i love to get together do some stuff uh pass it on maryland.org got that i'm book more i'm bookmarking that pass it on maryland.org right now done bookmarked appreciate that what else we got here yeah single user mode that'll that'll do it um, i'm on a system 76 machine right now it's really fast uh wkt dev what is the what what machine are you on right now i'm on a galago pro um the 14 inch model uh it works really well like I, i've got a i7 in here and 16 gigs of ram it's on my development machine um pretty fast like nvme ssd it works really well i do most of my most of my work from it um I hate my programming. I love my program. I love my programming for teaching. Now, I would never want to do my programming to solve real problems, but I do love it for teaching. Um, it takes the edge off for people, um, but I really love I really love my programming. So we need Linux for this? No, you do not need Linux for this. If you have a Windows subsystem for Linux, absolutely use it. I love Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, you should use it if you have it. We, you do not need Linux for this, though. Python runs on... Mac, Windows, everything. So I'll show you how to get that on there. Key Lime LaCroix is the best one. Uh, so it's funny because here we have a bunch, we have like all the flavors. I want Key Lime, we have lime. The only one I hate so far is coconut. Um, my favorite is probably dragon, was it dragonberry or dragon fruit uh, or pamplemousse or pamplemousse or pam pamplemousse. I think I, I got that one there, but uh, I think it's I think it's just grapefruit, but in French or something or in Italian, I don't know. Um, but that one's pretty good as well. Um, I used to hate this stuff. I really used to hate this stuff. It tastes like TV static. It really does. It tastes like TV static. But um, one day I was just like, you know what? That TV static tastes kind of good. Like lemony TV static, refreshing, gets you hydrated. Feels like I'm drinking soda, but I'm not, which is kind of nice. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> the core tastes like yesterday sweat. Yes, it does for sure. Uh, let's see. Will subs get anything special today? Nothing special. Nothing specifically special today. Again, subs will get access right now. Um, subs get access to a Google Classroom with a bunch of extra um, resources, a bunch of extra activities and things. So that's what you get for subbing, um, as well as access to a sub only Discord. The Discord will be sub only, um, and I will be prioritizing because it's growing bigger and bigger um i will be prioritizing questions in the discord over questions that are happening in the slack channel um so that'll give you some advantages as well um pinky out um what camera setup so my camera is a sony a6400 it's got the kit lens on it i'm new to cameras uh, i'm gonna i'm probably gonna grab a new lens though like a sigma 16 mil or well, people are, are telling me this stuff's so expensive, man. I don't, if anyone's into photography or videography, this stuff's out of control. I could have a regular, uh, I have a regular webcam that I could use, but um, because because I'm focusing on this year on YouTube, YouTube's gonna be a pretty big focus. I needed a nice camera, so I decided to invest in a camera, but I got a cam link, but that is my camera setup. Uh, it's pretty nice, pretty clear, um, works well for the stuff that I need to do right now. I do have access to some other stuff. Um, as well, I have access to a little bit of, I have a little studio setup that I have access to as you guys will be seeing a lot of, again, video drops are going to be Friday for YouTube. So let me know how you guys like that. Um, different cameras as well. People are into cameras. I think those are Canon 6Ds that I have access to with some better, way better lenses. So I'll be using a combination of the two for that. Um, yeah, LaCroix tastes like yesterday. Sweat. I like that. I'm saving that. That's good. Polar is better. I'll try Polar. I don't know anything about that. You have a podcast? No, I do not have a pa a podcast, but I will be. Hmm. Oh, last video. Yeah, we'll talk about. I'll talk about last video, but um, I don't have a podcast. I may start a podcast. Everyone tells me I have a podcast voice, and podcasts are cool. But right now, I'm not gonna start one. But maybe later on this year, I might start one. <laughs> yeah, TV static does. It tastes like TV static. It really does. Please uh, re-upload if you can. Last night's DevOps broadcast. I will. I found out that as a Twitch affiliate, I'm a Twitch affiliate, that I'm not, I'm actually not allowed to upload to YouTube for 24 hours. So you can watch it here on Twitch. But today, tonight, tonight, I'll be able to upload it to YouTube just because I now have access to. 35 mil, you should be fine. I'll check out 35 mil. I don't think about that. Um, I'll check it out. It's, it's a very expensive hobby. I'm learning. I'm... You know, I, luckily you guys helped me out. Um, the last, the pilot for the DevOps thing. Um, 
you know, it helped. It helped fund the camera. Um, again, the goal is to pour everything back into this to grow it and to help uh, give people access to it. So, quick note: uh, Class Code Google Classroom didn't work for me for DevOps. I can email about that. Cool. Either email me or hit me on um, here. A bunch of people were able to get in, um, but I'll be sending out information tonight about this one, which will have both access codes in it for anyone who wants to join either one of them. Um, but I'll help you get in if you can't get in for sure. Oh, dope. All right. I mean, yeah, I'll give podcasts a chance for sure. Um, I'll do my best. So if you're if you if you just join my YouTube channel, I have a I have a video promo. Uh, how bad do you want it? Video promo on there where I do a little bit of voiceover work in there. Uh, let me know how you guys like that. It was fun. Just want to mess around, get people excited. But check that out. All right. So now took a break. Let's get back into what we're going to be doing, what we're we'll learning and what I want to you to to get out of this and what I expect to see. So a little bit of a Harry Potter quote here. You see what you expect to see, Severus. Um, what does that mean? So what do I expect to see? I expect to see active in engagement um, on here. So you guys are already doing that. Everyone's you know interacting with each other. Uh, there's a Slack, there's gonna be a Discord. Uh, I want people uh, actively uh, speaking with each other, actively asking questions. And we're talking about the, everything below the active engagement is all about engagement. <clears throat> so I want you to ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. I may not answer them immediately on stream. Someone in the chat um, hopefully will help out and, and email you or, or not email me or respond to your question. If not, save that question, post it in Slack, uh, save it for the discord, save it for office hours, but get your question answered. Hold on to it. Make sure uh, we get an answer. Like ask questions. It's okay to be confused. No question is a bad question. Ask questions, please. Um, answer questions. Um, I can't. I, one for the asking questions. I can't tell you how many other people are watching will have the same exact thing that um, that you're asking for. Um, so ask questions. Answer questions. If you know the answer, answer the question. Don't be afraid because you're just learning. And maybe something you just learned yesterday. Don't sweat that. If you know the answer, or if you think you know the answer, try to answer it. If if you're not sure, if you know the answer, and you want to take a shot at it, again, let people know. Say, hey. I'm not 100% sure about this, but I believe that this is the answer and that's okay. Preface it with that and um, and do your best to answer people's questions. You know, be a resource to everyone. The learning that you're doing is valuable. So go ahead and do that. Uh, check out all of the supply resources each week. So if you are subscribed and again, very soon, I think that we're, we might be able to find a way for everyone to get subscribed no matter what. Um, Check out all the supplied resources each week. Um, some of the stuff is like during this part, there's actually going to be things that aren't related specifically to Python here. There's going to be some command line stuff just for anyone who's not familiar with command line stuff and hasn't done any Linux stuff or or, or any kind of command line work. There'll be some, some uh, tutorials for that stuff. There'll be a lot of things that surround this that will help you in a lot of different ways. So. Go over all the stuff. You don't need to master all of it, but go through it. Watch it. Watch the videos. There's some there's some long videos in there that I've shared. Uh, some are like an hour long. Um, take find some time throughout the week and go ahead and go through those things. Um, and just just get your ears and eyes on this stuff. The more you see it, the more you hear it, the quicker you'll bring it in and you'll get better at it. All right, there's a big one. I want you to spend at least five hours per week learning outside of this boot camp. So. You'll be spending about four hours here on the on the Python bootcamp per week. I want you spending at least another five hours. So I'm asking for a nine hour per week commitment so that you can learn uh, so that you can learn this stuff um, more if you can. Definitely more if you can. But I want you to invest at least five hours outside of this. So we'll stream for two days. That means I'm only asking for an hour every other day. Um, this is just like working out. This is just like anything else. Spend an hour or more. Um, per day, if you can, again, if, if you can't do it every day, find, you know, two or three hours Saturday morning and get a lot of that done then. And, you know, find some time throughout the week, half an hour here, half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, however you can give me five hours, spend five hours learning this stuff. And I think you'll, you'll, you'll be excited at how, at how much you learned during that time. And then the last thing is I want to, I expect to see some affirmations of progress. Some people already started it, uh, but on social media or wherever, you know, um, again, I, this is a community. I, I want to create a community. I want you all to create a community. I want this to be yours. Um, but I want to. I, I want you all to be able to follow each other. I want to be able to see what you guys are doing as you're learning, as you're watching the streams, as you're working on problems, asking questions. You know, take a picture and, and post it on social media with a mastermind hashtag. Um, 
without the eye. Some people, I, I actually found a bunch where people were posting it with the eye, uh, but it's master MND. But again, just uh, show people, you know, what you're working on, show people, you know, allow people to be a part of your process, allow people to be part of your learning process. I think it'll be pretty dope. Um, so yeah, so that's what I expect to see. Um, we're gonna run over the curriculum really quick. Um, super duper quick. We'll run over the quick, the curriculum cause you've already seen it or a lot of people have already seen it. And actually let me on do not disturb mode because a lot of people subscribe. Actually, I'm gonna go through and thank everyone for the subscriptions later. Um, that's why I put this stuff at the bottom. Um, I didn't want, um, all the subscriptions and followers to, uh, have a huge interruption on some of the stuff that we're going to be doing, but thank you everyone, everyone who's subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, but I hope, I hope again, I I'm trying to provide you a service. So I'm hope I'm hoping that, um, that I can give you enough content. I, I can give you enough value out of that. Um, I hold me accountable to that, but yeah, so let's go over the curriculum really quick. So we're going to academy.mastermind.io. Let's just take a look at what we're going to be doing. So it's today curriculum day introduction to programming. We're about to hop into the introduction to programming really quick. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be learning about, you know, dynamic versus statically typed languages, compiled versus interpreted. A lot of big words, you may, like not big words, but they're, they're words that you may not have ever heard of. This is the stuff that I want you to start taking in the concepts as I'm saying them, as we're talking about them, you know, write, write down the ones that you're not super familiar with that when we get to the end, if you don't really understand it, write it down, like pick it up, watch some, some other people, uh, other people's videos about it. So you can pick that stuff up um, on Tuesday on Wednesday on Wednesday we'll be hopping in we'll be getting uh, Python installed we will actually get Python installed tonight uh, we'll get Python installed talk about editors talk about installation uh, talk about the history of Python things like that but we'll be coding uh, that's when I'll indoctrinate you to them but we'll talk about VS code all the other editors um, on Wednesday and then next week we're really getting in everything we'll start you know really coding and showing you how to do real things how to get input output things like that uh, just you know get data out to the screen talk about data types so you know the difference between different data types and how to work with strings and integers and floats and again lots of words that might be scary don't sweat it Ain't a big deal. You'll get it uh, when we get there. It's not nearly as hard as you think. Um, and so, I, someone actually looked at this and was like, hey, I think you can move a little bit faster through this. And while that is true, um, I think focusing for two hours on these things will really help people drive home things. So we're actually gonna be doing problems together uh, that'll help drive home these concepts, drive home these things. So we're not moving super fast in the beginning. Um, data structures and you'll learn about lists and how to use them in dictionaries and arrays and tuples, all that stuff. We'll get into that. Then we'll get into operators and expressions. So we'll learn how to compare things and, you know, see if numbers are, are bigger than others or strings are equal to strings. And we'll learn how to do some math and we'll learn how to make some decisions. This is where programming really gets cool. And we'll learn how to do all that stuff. And uh, that'll be great. Uh, then we're going to conditional. So again, this is how we're going to make decisions as well. We're going to be uh, using these operators up here and some other things to figure out, you know, how to make decisions and, and, and do logic inside of our code, because that's going to be pretty important. Then we're going to get into some algorithms. So now that we know how to make decisions and we know about data types, all that, we're going to start learning how to like really put those things together to solve problems. We're going to start doing, you know, some of the cool problems that they want you to do in interviews like FizzBuzz, which is the famous one, not really a famous one. On. it's it's dumb but it's a good it's a good thing to cover early on but we'll be doing some uh some stuff on um on exorcism.io maybe maybe project euler um and some other things so that'll be great then we'll learn how to add in some more uh logic and some more um some more tools to be able to solve problems so we're going to add in loops loops are super powerful Talk about loops um then we're going to take a step back from the coding and we're gonna we're gonna learn about git uh git's great this will be two hours of Git. And I can't tell you, for me, I did not learn Git until three years ago. So until the fifth year of my, the fifth year of my, I guess, fifth or sixth year of my career. Um, and I didn't really, I, I knew what it was kinda, but um, it like something like this would've been super valuable for me, but Git is super powerful. We'll learn how to work together. We're gonna do some stuff where all of us are contributing to something at once. It's gonna be pretty cool. Um, we'll learn about Git. Then we'll learn about functions and reusable code and lanterns and scopes, uh, scope, what, what scope is. Um, that'll be cool. Then we'll learn some more algorithms. We'll do errors and figure out how to um, handle errors and, and handlers, uh, figure out how to use um, Python to manage files on your uh, on your computer, open up files and write to files and things like that. 
Uh, then we'll do some Python scripting. We'll learn how to, again, put together all the things that we've learned uh, to be able to do some scripts, some powerful scripts to be able to automate some things. Um, then we'll hop into object-oriented programming. We'll talk about classes and objects and um, and, and talk about object-oriented programming uh, compared to other things like functional programming, things like that. Um, that'll take two parts here. Uh, learn some more algorithms. We'll go over some coding challenges. We'll learn some of the common ways to do things. Uh, again, more of the common problems, solving those problems. Then we're gonna do a project, um, a big project. Um, probably two projects, to be honest, um, but two big projects that really tie together a lot of the stuff. Um, and then I'm actually gonna leave you with a project that we start. I'm gonna get you started on a project that <clears throat> I want you guys kind of to take and run with after that. Um, yeah. Um, Actually, yeah, sorry, never mind. They're both here. Uh, the, the, there's two projects here. And again, we're probably actually not going to finish this second capstone project. We're just going to get far into it, and you're going to have to run with it and have some creativity for the end. Um, now what? We're going to talk about coding interviews and how to crack that um, and what to expect there. Then we're going to have an engineering panel. So we did this last time. We set up an owl cam, and we got engineers from different levels. You know, we got some some junior level engineers and mid level engineers and senior engineers, and we got together and we talked about salaries. We talked about things that are tough, um, things that you should learn, things that you should watch out for. Um, but again, it's an, it's a it's a Reddit style ask me anything panel. You, we'll have we'll have questions ready, curated, and uh, queued up and ready. But this will be your opportunity to ask all the questions you want to those people, uh, and then we'll do a retro. So we'll take a step back and talk about the things that we did over the 12 weeks and we'll figure out what we liked, what we didn't like, what we could do better next time um, so that the next time around can be better than this time around. And the, the experience that the next group or even if you want to rewatch it, that make sure that we want to make sure that the next experience is better than this experience. We always want to get better. Um, and so we'll talk about retrospectives, but that's the, that's the whole curriculum. Um, again, that's 12 weeks of content. It's all starting today. It'll end up, it'll end at the end of March. Um, so hopefully again, hopefully commit to that amount of time. Again, it's just two days a week. All you gotta do is two days a week. No big deal. You can watch it anytime you want. You don't have to watch it live, even though I would prefer you to watch it live, but that's what we're going to be doing. And I think at the end, you'll be surprised at how much you really know, um, and how much you can apply this to getting a job. All right. So again, curriculum, we're all done with that. You know, <coughs> we're done rapping about that too much. We want to get started, man. It's time to it's time to get started. Let's start learning about coding. Like we came here to learn about Python. We came here to learn about coding. So let's learn about coding. Like let's get let's get you know let's get going. So again, we're gonna take another break, take a breather. You know, run to the bathroom if you gotta run to the bathroom. Go ahead and get yourself some water. Again, let's let's take a sip of Lacroix. But get yourself some food. Again, get yourselves comfortable. Let's do it. Take a bio break. Get ready because we're going to start talking about programming, get you introduced to it, uh, introduce you what it is um, so that you have some context going into when we're learning about stuff. So we'll stop there for a second so I can go through and see you subscribe so I can thank you for, uh, for being a part of the family. I like to welcome people as they log on. Man, you guys are uh, you guys are typing a lot. Uh, Google Classroom, I'm going to get you a we're for sure going to get everyone access to Google Classroom. I'm going to I'll send you something in another email. There'll be another email going out tonight. We can get together in Slack. Um, if anyone's having any specific problems, reach out to me directly. Either uh, whisper me here on or, or DM me here on Twitch or on any of the other platforms and we can get you worked out uh, for those things. Um, but I haven't sent out if, if you weren't a part of if you weren't subscribed already, um, last night, um, you haven't got an email yet. So you will get, you'll get the email. Don't sweat it. Uh, you'll definitely get the email. I promise you, you get the email after this. Um, cool. One point for asking questions, two for answering, three for being correct. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, let's see. So uh, I think I, so I, I originally thought Google Classroom had to be I thought you had to have a Google account to be able to log into Google Classroom. But I was uh, someone definitely let me know that that's not true. Uh, it is true by default um, because Google tries to, you know, lock people down and make sure they have a Google account to be able to do that. But you can't allow others in. So if you were trying to use a different email address to log into the Google Classroom, 
uh, tonight you will be able to use non Google accounts to be able to join it. No big deal. I don't really care what email you use. I just thought from the way they presented it to me is that you needed to use uh, Gmail. Um, but there are ways in your own in my like Google admin uh, for master for my mastermind domain to be able to allow other people to, to get in with their email. So that will be enabled tonight. So you don't need to use uh, your Google account to be able to do that tonight. Um, so that might be some of your problems right now. If you were trying to use a non Gmail account, that might've been your problem. Uh, you might want to add a couple slides about the Zen of Python. So great. You see goodness. You're a step ahead. There is, uh, I, I think next class there's a Zena Python. We're definitely moving over the Zena Python. We're going to be importing the package and importing this um, and getting all that done. You're 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 a step ahead for sure. Um, thank you for that. Moving to Stack Overflow's basement. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Don't call it indoctrinate, call it uh proselytis, I don't know, I don't even know what that is. I'm about to Google it because again, that's what I do when I don't know things. Again, I don't know it all. I'll read stuff. I don't even know if you say it. Let's see how Google says proselytize. Proselytize. I definitely knew that word. I didn't know how to I didn't know how to pronounce it when I read it. And I wonder can you guys hear that? When I hit the when I hit that, can you hear proselytize? Well, cool. Um convert or attempt to convert. I like that. I'm gonna I'm adding proselytize to my vocabulary. So I'm gonna proselytize you all uh so that you can uh into Vim. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna switch you over from VS Code to Vim. You'll see me do a lot of stuff with VS Code. Uh mainly because I gave everyone this info last night, but uh I made one of my other all right, actually let me take a step back. I like to like, I'm kind of hands on. I like to build my own thing. So again, I like to work on my cars and build race cars, things like that. Uh, but I've always kind of customized my own things to build stuff. I built all my computers are custom built on myself, things like that. But I recently got into, I've been into keyboards for a while, not not for a while, but I've, I've, I've been into mechanical keyboards for a little while where I thought I was into mechanical keyboards. But then I found out there's a whole culture of, uh, there's a whole scene of building your own keyboards. I didn't know that was a thing that you could do and really get custom. I was basically just buying um, expensive keyboards, um, but I'm a terrible typist. So I do have, I've got a bunch of keyboards that cost well over a hundred dollars. I had them already. Um, I picked them up over the years, you know, I'm not rich at all. Um, so like, I didn't just go out and buy a bunch of hundred dollar keyboards, but over the years, I want to try new things. I like the feedback that they give, but I'm an awful touch typist. I, you'll see me look down the keyboard all the time. I'm, I'm getting better. One of the things that I'm doing this year is getting better. I have some worth per minute things that I'm trying to do. But I recently got into the custom keyboard game, which is super problematic. Um, and so I started with that. But um, while I was diving back into Vim, I was like, oh, I got to get way better at typing. I just got to get way better at typing because Vim is uh, keyboard based. It's modal editor, keyboard based. Um, so the goal this year is to be building my own keyboards and, you know, be, become a great touch typist so that I can, you know, never pull my hands off of the keyboard to do everything that I need to do uh, because it's cool and because it's faster and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see me struggle. I, I just ordered a keyboard. Um, I'm about to do a keyboard build, which is a 60% keyboard. So, uh, imagine the keyboard you're looking at now, uh, on your computer, but without all the function keys, without the numpad on the right, without the, without the arrow keys, without the insert page up, page down, it was basically just the numbers, the letters and symbols of the keyboard. Um, so yeah, you gotta, to use a keyboard like that, you gotta get good. So my goal is to get super good right now. So, uh, yeah, that's. That's my part of the reason why I'm using Vim because I want to be a keyboard. I want to be a keyboard lord. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely I, I I would love for you. I would love to proselytize you all into using Vim. Uh, the workplace Slack. You want to join? Okay, looks like you guys got that terminal. The cloud is a lie. I love it. Is VS Code a snap? I do think VS Code is a snap. So if you want to use Snap, um, we can do that. Um, I'll show you guys that in a second. I'm making models of cool things. Diffy Q. That's that's dope. Um, that's dope. Cloud is alive. No both cloud's just someone else's computer. All right. <clears throat> cool. Hopefully everyone went to the bathroom. Everyone got ready. Let's get started. So 
what the heck is programming really? Um, what is programming? So programming, uh, this is the Google answer. The one I, this is, I know I, I properly credited them. I didn't want to steal this, but, um, programming is when you provide a computer or other machine with coded instruction for the uh, automatic performance of a task. So you provide, so you give a computer or a machine um, coded instruction so they can automatically perform a task. That's all coding is. See here on the right, it's basically an instruction manual for your computer to do what you want it to do. So that's, you know, that's pretty simple. I think we can understand that. I think we can understand that programming is coding instructions to provide to a computer so that it can perform a task automatically. Um, cool, but how do we give a computer instructions? Uh, and that's what coding language is. Uh, so there's been a lot that are built. You can see a bunch here. Um, whoops, my mouse is too sensitive. Um, you see here stuff like here, Swift and Ruby. There's a bunch of coding languages, a bunch of programming languages. But um, these programming languages, what are they? And, and, and Yes, it, the definition is that we're gonna be providing coded instructions to the computer, but how does a computer understand the instructions that we are going to be providing it? Uh, it doesn't, the computer, but the, I mean, realistically doesn't speak the language that we that we speak, doesn't really speak English, doesn't really speak Spanish. Um, what does it speak? So what it speaks is source code actually. So it gets, to, no, it does, it does not speak source code, but, um, Computers work off of binary uh, machine code. They, they work off of um, ones and zeros, not really ones and zeros, it's, um, but there's these states, these on and off states, there's these transistors. We'll get deeper into that. If you are in the Google Classroom, uh, you will be listening to this week, the Base CS podcast. That'll give you some more information about binary. It'll give you some more information about how, compu how computers um, compute, um, how they solve problems, what goes into them, what comes out of them, which I think will be important. Um, but yes, that is the machine code. But um, how does the computer understand our instructions? Let's start from the top. Uh, source code. So source code is the, actually, let me see. Okay, never mind. All right, this is good. I was about to go into each one, but I forgot I have slides for each of them. But basically, source code is the top level thing. That's the code that you write. Um, then it goes through a compilation or interpretation uh, to be able to translate it. You know, we have Google Translate here. We write English. Translate it, it translates it into bytecode or machine code um, that the computer can read in a Spanish over here, and you pass it through the translator, and that's how it can understand our instructions. So let's talk about what each of these things is and let's dive through it. So source code, what is source code? Source code is the human readable code that you write. Now, it's debatable whether or not this code is human readable. It is human readable. Uh, if you're first look, looking at it, um, take a look at this code here, uh, maybe a little bit small, but you can see words here like range and you know, you can see the number 50 and an X and an I, and you can see the word print and you can see words here. And, your brain can process this information. Now, you may not understand right now what it's doing, but you can process this information. Um, you can see the words like for and if and else and print. Awesome. Well, oh, darn it. Um, so yes, this is the source code is the machine is the human readable code that you write. So whatever language you're gonna be writing in, if it's C, if it's Python, if it's Golang or Go, sorry, it's not Golang, it's Go or Ruby or any of that, the code that you're gonna be writing, that you're gonna be inputting in your computer, the code that you're gonna be learning to, to input into the computer uh, to say that you're a programmer is the source code. Cool. So next thing, let's go to the compiler. So the compiler is a complicated piece of technology that translates source code into machine code, um, which is binary or byte code. Now let's break that down a little bit. <coughs> so um, again, this is the Google Translate of the stack. So we take that source code, we pass it to the compiler. Um, do I have an interpreter next? Yeah, okay. We have the compiler. Um, piece of software that sits in between everything. You pass your code to it. It goes ahead and it says, "Hey, I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look at all of it. I'm gonna look at all the code and I'm gonna run through the logic of it and I'm gonna run through the way it's written and I'm gonna translate this uh, directly. I'm gonna translate it directly from the source code that you wrote into um, either machine code that the machine can read or this intermediary step that's bytecode. We'll talk about bytecode in a little bit. We might skip bytecode just because it's not super important for you to know right now. Um, but that is what a compiler does. It is Google Translate basically for the, the human readable code that you write and what the machine reads. So 
Remember, do your best uh, by next week to remember source code. What source code is? Again, remember, very simple. It's the human readable code that you are going to be writing. You're going to be writing the source code. And then the compiler, which goes ahead and it takes that source code and it translates it down into code that the machine can read. <coughs> now, interpreter. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let me get a little bit of water. So an interpreter, um, an interpreter um, is sort of a compiler. Um, you can think about it um, kind of like a compiler. Um, all code does kind of get um, compiled. Um, uh, yes, Cujo, there will be quizzes and practice problems. Uh, there will be a lot of, there'll be quizzes live on stream. Uh, there'll also be quizzes in the Google Classroom, uh, but there will be practice problems and exercises uh, throughout the entirety of the course. Um, but interpreter, so over here on the left, and maybe I should have labeled it, this is your source code. Again, you can see words like if and false and else. So the again, these are things that you can read. You can read this stuff. You know what those things, you may not know what this code is doing, but those are things that you can recognize um, that you can see there. Now, the interpreter is going to, you know, in here in the middle, uh, the interpreter is gonna go through line by line and it's gonna interpret that code. It's gonna take that code and it's going to go through and it's going to, very similarly how, to how a, um, a compiler works, it's gonna take that line of code, uh, every line of instruction, and it's gonna convert that into something that can, the computer can execute. So it, you pass in, you pass in your code, the interpreter uh, kind of works real time um, and interprets everything kind of real time and spits that out to the computer. Um, you, you'll be able to, we're about to talk about the differences between an interpreter and a compiler because the first time I was running through this and learning this, um, I was like, those sound like the same thing to me. Um, and they have some, they have some similarities. They're not the same thing, um, but they have similarities. I'm gonna skip over bytecode. Bytecode is this intermediary step, um, which is very interesting. It's kind of a combination between compiled and interpreted, um, but we're gonna skip that. Um, we're gonna skip that for now because I don't think it's super important. I think it might confuse you. Um, but machine code, machine code is binary. Um, machine code is binary. So again, on or off is a little bit wrong. It's more like states, uh, zeros and ones. Um, but basically this is how a computer um, encodes its information. This is this is what a computer understands, the computer processor, all that. It, it, it understands ones and zeros. And um, I, you know, that's how, that's what makes things digital. Um, and, that, and that makes, the computer can understand these things. So everything gets broken down basically into binary mach or machine code. Uh, there's stuff, there's, sim there's, a, there's, there's, it gets deeper, a little bit deeper than all of this, but at the end of the day, uh, all of your code gets broken down into ones and zeros so that your computer can interpret it. Cool. Take a, we'll take a step there. Ask some, if you have any questions about any of that, again, we're gonna skip by code, ask a few questions, and some of that might get answered after this, but we'll stop there for a second. Um, what uh, actually compiles a code? Great question. Um, v, uh, versus an interpreter uh, with Node.js be a compiler or interpreter? Great question. So uh, Node.js is an interpreted language, uh, not a compiled language. So um, interpreted languages like Python. So we're going to learn that Py tonight that Python is an interpreted language, not a compiled language. Um, and they'll come with an interpreter. They'll come with um, a, a piece of program that come with a program um like python comes with a uh, repl um a repl console thing that it'll give you so that you can be able to interpret you can be able to pass in code a uh, little snippets of code it'll take that code and it provides you immediate feedback um compiled languages on the other hand uh you take that code um and you pass you you, you pass that um that code to a compiler which is again it's, it's a program that is similar to an interpreter, um, but it goes a little bit deeper and it does it does all of its checks and balances up front. So it goes through, it looks at the code that you have, it makes sure that it is, um, that everything it, it falls within the rules that it offers, um, you know, and it does it as a whole. So it doesn't, it doesn't go line by line. Interpreters uh, generally go line by line, uh, interpret these things um, and it kind of follows the flow of what you've passed into it um, and for, for that reason, they're actually uh, a little less efficient um, because it's kind of doing it's doing the processing on the fly. Um, but again, yeah, they, they are they are similar. They're similar conceptually. Um, they're definitely similar conceptually. Uh, I would for right now, 
I would go with compilers do everything up front. Compilers take all your code and turn them into a runnable package up front. And interpreters take your code uh, passed in line by line um, and uh, interpret what, what the lines mean and, and returns the data to you. Um, so it gets a little bit um, different. Yeah, we'll go over REPL. I shouldn't even have said a REPL yet. Uh, it does stand for read, evaluate, print loop. We'll talk about what that means in a second as well. Uh, does the translation need to occur before compiling is done? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but the the compiling is that translation. So for a compiled language, uh, your computer doesn't generally doesn't know what to do with it. No, not generally. Your computer doesn't know what to do with it until that code is compiled. Um, your computer has no idea how to read that source code. That source code means nothing to your computer until you compile it down to machine readable code. Um, whereas interpreters, um, you don't need to pre-compile. Um, it will do it on the fly. You'll be able to pass pass your code to it on the fly. So generally, um, actually, we're about to get into all that. We'll get into some of the advantages and, dis and disadvantages. Um, but yeah, um, translation needs to occur. Uh, compiling is that translation. Uh, compiling is the translation. So for your computer to be able to run compile, uh, a compiled language, the, compi the compilation has to happen first. All compilation does is turn the source code, again, the words are important here, source code that you write into machine readable code. Um, that is what compilation does. Uh, PHP equals compiler. No, PHP is an interpreter. Um, PHP is also an interpreted language. I'll show you the differences between interpreted. I'll show you like a, a chart of what's compiled, what's not. Um, but yeah, compiler is like a trans a translator from one language to a lower level language. Pretty much. That's exactly, uh, that's exactly what it is. Um, for sure. Um, so let's go to the next one. All right. So now let's learn about some uh, differences. Uh, and maybe this will start to put into context the differences between the two. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, compiled languages are very efficient at runtime with, um, at runtime, which means very fast. So the reason they're so fast is because you the computer is doing all the work up front. So, um, when I compile code, I, I'm compiling it before I run it. So I'll take some code. Now I'll compile it to machine readable code and that'll give me some type of output that I can run because every, because all the, all of the translation has been done before my computer runs it. Um, because it's done, it's been done before runtime. When I go to run that code, so that's whatever you see runtime, that's when you are running code. Uh, so runtime means when I'm actually running the code, when I go to run that, because it's all the, because all the translations have already taken place, it's very fast. So compiled languages are very fast. Compiled some, some compiled languages are C, C++, uh, Java, it's probably the biggest ones, you know, Go is a compiled language. Um, so, so these are, these are generally fat rust. Uh, these are fast languages. So um, yes, because the compilation happens beforehand, they're very efficient uh, with their memory management, etc. cetera. Uh, so they're very fast. Uh, silly errors are caught at compile time. So let's talk about compile time versus runtime. I said runtime is what? It is when you run the code. So very descriptive. Run Runtime is when the code is when you are actually executing the code. Compile time is actually when you're compiling the code. So in a compiled language, the flow goes from source code, then compile time, then runtime. So you've got to write your source code. You have to compile it. Uh, you have to write source code, compile it, run it. That's the, that's the path it has to take. Write the code, compile it so that it translates, run it. Uh, so compile time is when it goes to compile. So silly errors are called at compile time. So um, compiled languages are great because before you get to the part where the code is running and you're trying to do some cool stuff, uh, errors will be caught. So you'll catch them early. Um, and so some people find that frustrating, um, but it's great. Um, before you go ahead and deploy this code to production, <coughs> silly errors are caught. Um, usually they're type problems, um, but it again, it does that translation beforehand. It does all of its checks and balances and make sure that you have operated within the right paradigm of the language. You're following the rules of the language. Um, so compiled languages are generally more strict in this case. Um, you can't, you don't have as, you, you kind of don't have as much freedom, um, because these things will, will get caught. Um, they usually follow because they have a compiler, which is pretty complicated that has rules. Um, you generally have to be, um, have to do things in the way that you, they want you to do them. Um, 
due to its efficiency. So we talked about why compiled languages are efficient. Um, and that's because you're, you're doing the, uh, during compile time is doing all the translations. Uh, so when you go to run it, it's very fast because all the translations have already occurred. Due to how efficient it is, compiled languages tend to be a less, less of a strain on computer resources because you've already used the computer resources to do the hard stuff. So um, compiling things like the Linux kernel may take a long time and take a lot of computer resources um, because you're, again, you're doing everything beforehand. You're taking the code and you're putting it into a format that the computer can then take and read. Um, so all of the work is done beforehand. So they tend to you know, be a little more efficient or a lot more, not a little more, a lot more efficient on computers. And then static typing. So we are not talking about typing like a keyboard. Um, we are talking about data types. Um, static typing means that uh, types are important and that um, you need to either, uh, most of the time you need to tell the computer what type something is um, because the type is very important. So if I'm, if I want something to be a number, I have to tell a compiled language that, Hey, I'm giving you this five, I'm giving you a five, but it is a number. I need you to know that it's a number and not a word and not a character and not anything else. It is a number and you should expect me to use it as a number. So if I try to add this number to a word, don't let me do that because this thing is a, this thing is a number. That thing over there is a word and they're two different types and they can't they can't mix, they can't mix and match. Um, you need to be very strict about what you're doing. So Static typing, whenever you see statically typed languages, it, it has to do with data types and not typing on a keyboard. Um, and that just means that um, it needs to, you know, it needs to expect a type, it needs to know what's being output, it needs to know and follow what type something is, and it's very strict about those things. And I will show you very good examples of those things shortly. Interpreted languages, what's so great about interpreted languages? So, changes to code can be made and tested quickly. So. Com uh, compilation can actually take a little bit of time. Uh, you have a, a medium sized, large application. Compilation um, takes, you know, it could take minutes, hours sometimes. Um, and it could take a little, it could take a long time for you to have to make a change, compile your code and then go to, and then go run it. Interpreted languages, that's not the case because it takes it real time and it can interpret your code real time as you pass it to the interpreter. Um, you can make quick changes to code because you do, you do not have to compile the code. The interpreter will take care of that for you. Um, so you can make updates to code and see it run uh, immediately. And so you can see changes very quickly. Uh, generally debugging is easier in interpreter languages. And again, this is because um, this is because you can, you're able to see things kind of as they're being done. Uh, you have a little more observability into the way that the code is running. Um, so generally debugging is easier. Again, the word is generally, um, some people who have, uh, have used a lot of this stuff may have some different feelings, but generally it's easier. And then typing is dynamic. So uh, dynamic typing, um, means that these languages uh, generally have type inference uh, or type inferencing. So um, what does that mean? What does type inferencing mean? This is something maybe you should write down, but um, dynamic languages will attempt to infer what type you, you want something to be. So um, again, you haven't learned about types yet. So again, this may be something that you have to start taking in now and it's okay again, it's okay to be lost. Uh, something that may, we, we may fill in later, but uh, again, remember I told you that two different types, uh, one's actually called a string, but uh, let's say just to keep it simple, a number is different from a word. Those are two different types. So the word five is different from the number five, the two different things, even the character that is five, like you can have five as a character. That's not the same thing as the five, the number. So the value of five, the number is actually different from the character number five. Um, or the word five over here. Um, but when, in dynamic languages, you don't have to tell it what type something is. You put it in and it will do its best. To, uh, and it, it uses a bunch of different things like uh, characters that you can use to kind of help it infer and it kind of reads the program and tries to interpret what you're meaning and what you hope to do. Um, and so it's not strict on typing. So it will try to, um, it will basically try to make different types work together and it'll do some things to make things a little bit easier on you. So it's not as strict. Uh, so dynamic typing means it will, it will attempt to infer 
um, a type. So type inference is pretty important. And that is the difference between interpreted and compiled languages. Um, and a lot of the interpreted downfalls um, come from uh, the, the compiled languages benefit. So uh, they're slower, they're less efficient because they're, you're not pre-compiling the code. So it, it's, it's a strain on your computer resources uh, in comparison to compiled languages. Um, and it's not as fast. Uh, interpreted languages are just simply not nearly as fast as compiled languages because again, the translation is happening real time. It hasn't been pre-compiled, it is happening real time. So it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's much slower. Um, silly errors are, are, are actually caught at runtime and not compile time because there is no compile time. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So you have to run the code to find these errors. Um, yeah, but again, it's quicker to it's quicker to get up to speed in a dynamic uh, interpreted language, a dynamically typed interpreted language. It's quicker to kind of get going to make changes, <coughs> quicker to debug, etc. So those are the differences between the two. I think those are very important. Uh, it's very important to understand the difference between those two. If you want to see uh, th this week and next week will be re uh, really easy for you to get to kind of see the the different feeling of an interpreted versus a compiled language. Uh, we are doing Python here for the programming portion of the DevOps course. We're actually going to be using Go. Go is a statically typed compiled language. Um, it's interesting because Go has some tools in it to act like an interpreted language um, when, as you're writing code, but uh, they are they are different, um, and it'll be it's going to be interesting because we're becoming be covering very similar topics in this one week time frame. Um, so you may be you may be able to get some good insight from watching both of those things. And a lot of times, I'll actually probably show you the difference. Um, how, how a compiled language, the the thought process behind a compiled language as opposed to an interpreted language like Python. You, you'll end up seeing that a lot of stuff that we do in Python seems much easier compared to some of the things that we do in a compiled language like Go. Uh, you'll be like, oh, like there's less code, there's less code there. Uh, I had to write less, that makes a little more sense, that's just easy. Um, so you'll be able to see the differences there. But again, with, with that ease comes slower performance, with that ease comes, you know, some, some, uh, a little looser uh, security there, not not security as in someone hacking you, but security as in making sure errors are caught, things like that. So take that in, take a step back, you know, uh, let, let um, what's it called? Um, I don't know. Think about what you just think about what you just heard. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that before I go any farther here. Mm -hmm. Java only kind of compiled. Yes, that's why I skipped bytecode. Um, it gets compiled to bytecode, then actually run by the OS specific Java virtual machine. Yes. See, I, I know bytecode was going to be confusing, um, but you see goodness, that's a great answer there. Um, Java is like kind of compiled. It's like half compiled, half interpreted, kind of. Super weird. Um, but I want to skip that because I just thought tonight it would be a little, um, a little. Um, no, it depends on the number of things, CPU memory. Oh, that's the question. The compiled code is machine specific. Does that mean all PC file codes run at the same speed? It does not, it, yeah, it does not. It's a good question, um, but it does not. Um, ah, you guys are giving, you see goodness, you're giving fire answers. I love these, I'm stealing these. I'm saving everything, I'm stealing them. You guys should steal these answers too, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so. Again, at the end of the day, um, the difference between compiled versus interpreted, the main things to remember are generally typing. So interpreted languages are generally dynamic, uh, have dynamic typing. They will try to infer data types. That is that is what dynamic typing means, whereas compiled will not attempt to infer a type. It needs to know what type something is. Those types can't change. And it, it, those types are very important. So they're, they're static. They will not try to infer everything. You need to actively tell it what things are <coughs> goes weird. It has some, it has some aspects of type inference, super weird, but, um, yeah. Um, and, and then you need to know that compiled languages are translated beforehand. So you write code again, what's that code called source code, you write your source code, that stuff gets translated into machine readable code. And then you take that code and you pass it to a computer. Um, and it, and it runs, um, we'll talk, we'll talk about, um, compile targets and other things uh, a little bit later as well, but there's some, there's some stuff that gets into there. Um, 
Also, compile code is not necessarily machine specific. It's possible to compile code that can determine what system it's run on. Yes, different machine reasons, absolutely. Are we gonna install Vim and VS Code today? Uh, are they the, are they one of the same thing? What is VS Code? Great question. Uh, I don't think today, I think next class is where we're gonna get uh, installing all the editors. You can definitely get a head start on that stuff and maybe we will get a head start on it um, tonight. I'll show, maybe I'll just hop into Vim and be able to show you they're not the same thing. Um, if, if you're just diving into this stuff, I highly recommend you do not install Vim, to be honest. I highly recommend you install VS Code unless you have some uh, unless you have some good command line chops. Um, I would I would stick with VS Code. Um, I'll give you a link for VS Code. And I actually think if you type in exclamation point uh, VS Code, I think it'll give you a link. So it'll give you the download link to VS Code if you do exclamation point VS Code. Um, whatever computer you're on, it should take you there. Um, you should be able to install it if you want to try to get a head start on that. Um, yes, VS Code is a text editor, very much so a borderline IDE, very much so a borderline IDE. You can really make it basically an IDE, um, but yeah, we'll talk about what an IDE is, that, that's all coming. We're taking it slow, I don't want you, I don't want to pass you too much information in one night, especially if you're completely new to this stuff. Uh, but yes, perfect, the crow, killing it. You use these IDEs and these editors, You that's what you use to write source code. So it's very much like Microsoft Word, um, to, so you can write your documents. You're basically just using it to write your source code so that the machine can uh, can get it. Doug Muffin, what's your favorite pasta dish? Great question. I love pasta. Pasta is my favorite. That is why I've got this belly. Um, chicken parm. Chicken parm is my favorite pasta dish, preferably with spaghetti underneath uh, rather than penne. A lot of people like to do it under penne. Oh, uh, penne underneath. Spaghetti is my favorite pasta to have underneath there, but chicken parm by by leaps and bounds, my favorite pasta dish. Love spaghetti. Love almost all pasta dishes. You know, I love uh, I love some um, chicken alfredo. I love I love them all, um, but I love chicken parm. So cool. I'm I'm glad that is acceptable for sure. Uh, so VS Code is different from Python. Yes. Python is a coding language, uh, as a programming language. So again, that's one of the ways that we're gonna interact with the computer. Uh, VS Code is a tool that's used to write Python. So we're gonna use VS Code to write Python. Um, VS Code is the editor, it's the thing that we're gonna use to write the coding language. VS, uh, VS Code can write all kinds of languages. It can, run, it can write C and Go and anything we really wanna write in. Um, we can write any of those languages in there, but Python is the um, is the programming language that we're going to use. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the programming language. <coughs> um, favorite music. Um, so this is, this is always a hard one for me. Um, what are, uh, favorite music? I listen, I saw, I listen to hip hop the most by far the most. Um, but I'm not sure that's my, I'm not sure that's my favorite music. I listen to a lot of R&B. Um, so what a lot of you don't know is I actually play guitar for a long time. Um, I actually want to get another guitar, put electric guitar actually. Um, and in I got into college, I was really good at, um, I was really good at Guitar Hero, but then a bunch of people on my floor played real guitar. So I went out and got a $99 guitar and I started to try to learn the solos from all the songs that I was playing. Um, and so I got, I really, I got super big into, and to um, like melodic metal and rock. And I got super deep into like, um, like I listened to a lot of guitarists, um, Paul Gilbert, um, Yngwie Malmsteen, um, Steve Vai, a bunch of people. So like Buckethead is probably like my favorite um, guitarist, but I love, I love, um, I love instrumentals a lot. So I really love this, like, I really love, um, like lo-fi hip hop and stuff. I love instrumentals a lot. So like hip hop instrumentals I love. I used to always like basically just play guitar solos over hip hop instrumentals and stuff. Um, favorite music? I don't, ah, I don't, I really don't know. I do listen to a lot of different things, uh, but my favorite music might be like, like that, uh, like that instrumental guitar stuff. Again, if you want to check out someone like Paul Gilbert or Buckethead, it's probably my favorite, but I listen to hip hop by far the most. Like I listen to hip hop way more. Um, but I don't think it's really my favorite. And I, I, I really like hip hop for the beats, not so much the lyrics. Um, that's probably my favorite music. Um, cool, Beanchin. Um, how does VS Code and Python relate? Again, Python is the coding language. Um, VS Code and Vim are just code editors. They're just text editors. So all they are is applications to edit text. Again, think about it like the Google Docs or think about it like... Uh, 
it's basically like like Vim is like Google Docs and uh, VS Code is like Microsoft Office. And basically, you know, you can edit a document with both of those things. This is the same thing. So with VS Code or with Vim, we can edit Python code. Uh, we can write Python code in either one of those. No difference. Um, there's just two different ways to enter the code. Um, but yeah, there's a you will learn that there's a war, uh, there's an editor war, um, IDE or editor war. Everyone has strong opinions about what they use, why it's the best, um, why other things suck. Um, but we'll, we'll hop into all of those things next time. Um, um, is Python a scripting language? I, th I thought Python was a general purpose programming language. Um, I don't know. What's your favorite EC2 instance size? Uh, I don't know, T2 medium, that feels right. I don't know, uh, they, they've, they've added so many letters recently. Um, yeah, like T2 mediums are like perfect for everything that I would ever need to do. Um, will we be using UML at all? Um, probably not for this, probably not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, start playing guitar the same way, yeah, I, I love, I'm gonna get another one, I'm definitely gonna get another guitar. Uh, I play, I. I, every time I pick up a guitar, I still, I still got my chops. I have some old videos on YouTube. I'll send you guys some stuff from like 10, 12 years ago. But uh, yeah, if, if you, um, oh, 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 technical difficulties, Racer X. Uh, I love, again, I love Paul Gilbert. Racer X is dope. Um, technical, dif technical difficulties is great, great solo. Um, but check out, if you haven't seen it, uh, look at Paul Gilbert's solo. Find Paul Gilbert's specific solo on YouTube for technical difficulties. I like his a little bit better than the one for the actual song, for sure. Uh, definitely check out the YouTube channel, Epic Rap Battles of History. Of course, I, I who doesn't know about Epic Rap Battles of History? Uh, definitely a dope channel. Everyone should definitely check it out. It's, it's really good, I really love it. Um, my favorite things about these classes so far is the learning soundtrack. Yeah, again, it's the chill hop. It's, a, it's the, if you just go on Spotify and type in chill hop, um, we actually might have just finished it. Um, I'm, I don't know. Okay, a new song coming on. Um, but it's Chill Hop. There's there's a channel that exists on YouTube as well um, for Chill Hop. But uh, yeah, I like I like the I really like I really like the lo-fi stuff, and it's, it's really cool. Um, really keeps me focused. Anything special we need to have as prereqs before we download all the software next class? Flash player, antivirus? Nah. There's there's nothing you need. Um, yeah, nothing you need. Uh, we'll basically just be installing an editor as well as Python, and we should be good to go. Uh, so Python we call it general purpose and scripting language. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do tons of scripting in Python, so I certainly understandable as as a scripting language. Um, cool. All right, let's move on. You've had a little bit of time to take in compiled versus interpreted. Let's talk about types now. So you heard me. Again, we talked about static typing and dynamic typing. We talked, we kind of touched on what types are, but let's talk about what types really are. So over here on the left, uh, I'm sorry if you were not fortunate enough to uh, be a part of the worldwide phenomenon, which is Pokemon, but hopefully you were, and you know what you're looking at on the left. These are Pokemon types. So we were introduced to this stuff as kids. We didn't even know we were introduced to it. Um, I actually have a whole talk an entire talk on how Pokemon actually taught us DevOps. I'll definitely give it. I forgot I had this talk. Um, I've given it a few times before, but I'll give it to you on this channel. We'll talk about exactly why Pokemon taught us everything that we needed to know about DevOps before DevOps came out with the games, with the show. So we already knew what we were doing, um, but Pokemon lies in so many things that we're gonna be doing. And so these are Pokemon types. Uh, there are, um, Yes, they're way more, they're actually way more now. Now they're like hybrid types. So you can have like a, you can have like a fire uh, ground Pokemon or like an electric uh, water Pokemon, super weird. I don't really understand. It's too much. I tried to play the game. There's, there's like way too many things going on right now. I feel old and dumb, but there are types. So the same way there are different types of Pokemon, there are dragon types, fairy types and fighting types and flying. This We have the same things in programming. So um, all of these, all these things apply, the ones that are on here apply. I took this from the Golang one. These apply to Python as well. So let's talk about what they are. First thing um, is strings. Strings are a list of characters. So when you see strings, think words and phrases. Uh, actually, let me see what's after this. Cool, think words and phrases. And let's go ahead and again, we're gonna show you some pre stuff. So don't sweat it if you don't pick up all these things. 
um, which you do want to pick up. Uh, let's go ahead and update ZSH. Oh, can't do it. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Hype, whoa, hyper dot. Um, let's make this, let's make this an even 20. All right, that's a little bit bigger. Um, that'll be good enough for now. So, um, what is Hyper? Hyper is simply a terminal. So if you're on a Mac, uh, the app that's Terminal, um, or Linux, it's probably an app called Terminal, or on Windows, if you have like a console, uh, either the console PowerShell or something, um, <coughs> all this is, all it's just a terminal emulator. So it allows me to submit commands to my computer. Um, and it has, so this actually, uh, your, your terminal, um, and we'll learn some of this in the Linux portion. We'll go over some terminal stuff, um, in this course as well. But, um, this is basically an interpreter. It interprets the commands that you are, uh, there's, there's a, there's a shell called bash or ZSH running on your computer and it interprets the commands that you send to us. So I'll send it to command. It'll look at it. It'll say, Hmm, do I know what this does? It'll try to convert it into something else and it'll try to execute the command that I'm sticking in there. But yes, it is exactly like command prompt for windows. Um, but, um, the first thing we're going to be talking about, we're talking about types. We're talking about strings. So don't worry about, don't worry about the terminal. Don't worry about what I'm doing in the terminal. We're fo focus on the strings right now. If you don't know what a string is, think again, think words and phrases, think lists of characters. So, um, in almost every language and every language that I know of, uh, um, a string. So I'm going to drop into the Python. Uh, interpreter. So now we can write Python code and it's going to interpret it real time. I don't have to compile it. Um, but, um, a string, whenever you see quotes, single quotes or double quotes, at least in Python, think string. Um, these are, so I'll type in string. Um, but this is words and phrases. So I could type in here. Hello. My name is Aaron. Uh, this is a string. Again, it is a list of characters. It is a list of characters. Uh, one character is a string. Multiple characters together is a, are a string. Um, why did it go off of here? And that is what a string is. So when you see single quotes, double quotes, remember that. Um, yeah, list of characters, think quotes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. We can talk about type because we're talking about types. Um, let me see. Um, actually, I want to see. I actually don't know what Python will do if you do this. So there are uh, ways in Python to see what type something is. So we're, again, we're talking about types. We talked about dynamic. We talked about Python uh, having dynamic types. Um, but you can type in type and and pass in something, and you can see what kind of uh, what the type is. So um, all of them will have this class in the front, but str that stands for string. Um, so if I do something like this. This is what's interesting. Remember, I told you that the, the, the character five is different from the number five. Um, and remember, I just told you whenever you see quotes, whenever you see quotes in Python, whenever you see quotes in, in, in programming, especially double quotes, think string. That I want you to make that connection tonight for sure. Um, so you can see here that the type of five that's in quotes is a string. So again, when you see quotes, think string. String is just a list of characters. Even one character is a string. This is also a string. So no characters, just quotes, no characters. This also is a string. So again, um, whenever you see the quotes, think string. Uh, it'll get a little bit deeper. I, I, I kind of hate to use the character thing sometimes. It's pretty confusing. I think someone just asked it actually. Um, but uh, there are some things called runes and go and some other things. Um, which, which refer to one character and usually that's with single quotes. In Python, if you single quotes or double quotes, it is a string. You type in anything, it is a string. You see quotes, think string. Get that, you know, for Python, get that in your head. Uh, definitely get that in your head. Uh, type is helpful to tell new people so you can give them, yes, the tools to find answers. 1000%. So if you wanna know what type something is, again, someone just said it, you type in type, Put some parentheses and you go ahead and do that. So what you, what you don't need to do, see, that's not a string because I didn't put it in quotes, invalid syntax, but it's in quotes. What happens if we put double quotes over here and a single quote at the end? It doesn't work. You got to have matching a set of quotes. They both have to be the same. It doesn't matter which ones they are, but it needs to be the same. 
right now. Uh, if you can, you know, write down the type thing uh, for sure. But I don't need you to know the syntax for looking up a type. What I need you to know is that you can, there is a way to look up a type in Python. So in all programming languages, there's a way to look up what type something is. Types are important. Uh, I want you to know that you can look up uh, what a type is. So that way, even if you forget the syntax of it, you can easily go to Google and say, how do I find out what type something is in Python? Because you know that's, now you know that's something you can do in programming. That is a tool that you can put in your tool belt is that, hey, I know there are these things called types. Sometimes I need to figure out what type something is. I can find that out with some tool in Python. It is this type thing um, here. Cool. Where do I find a terminal on Windows 10? Um, so on Windows 10, it's probably it's called like command prompt, I think. But you don't need to like you don't need to follow along with this right now because you don't it, unless you already have Python installed, uh, you can absolutely try to go in and do this. Um, but if you don't have Python installed, I do want you to pay attention to this and not um, and not like I don't know. It, it, I, again, the concepts of what these types are more important than you learning how to look up the types. We will be doing this next time for sure. Once we get everything set up, <coughs> um, the string has quotes in it or the string has quotes in. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a good one. That is a great. I love that. Um, so we can say this string has quotes in it um, and we can close that, but we can put quotes around here. And this will still be a string and again. It just has to have uh, a matching pair of quotes um, opened and closed somewhere and it will still be interpreted as a string. It is OK. Um, you can also put the opposite so you can put a uh, single quotes on the outside and double quotes on the inside or single quotes everywhere and it will interpret as strings. So again, think strings uh, whenever you see quotes in Python, think strings. That is one data type. What is a string? Again, it is a list of characters. So we're talking about characters. Um, so letters, numbers um, and uh, and symbols. Some of the symbols um, are are. Yeah, that is that is what you want to think of when we're talking about strings. All right, cool. So um, because you saw that, remember, I told you that the character five is different from the number five. And so right now you see me type in five in here um, and we get something different. So now we get an int. Uh, why did we get an int when we did that? But when we have the quotes, we get string again. Like I said, the quotes denote that something is a string is of, of, of a list as a list of characters. So without it, a number, something that is a number, um, a whole number is an integer. So, um, ints, uh, you, they're, they're called ints in just about every programming language as well. Uh, stands short for integer. Um, and these are whole numbers. So I'm taking you back to your algebra class. I'm taking you back to school. Um, but integers are whole numbers. What is a whole number? That is a complete number. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, no decimals, not 1.2, not 3.6. They are whole numbers, even negative numbers. Uh, negative 10 is also an integer. So let's go back in here and let's go the type of negative 10. It is still an integer, whole positive and negative numbers um, is what an integer is. Um, so again, if you forgot what integers are, uh, maybe go back, um, read a little bit of math, but they're whole numbers. Very simple. Integers are whole numbers, and that is a different type. So we know two types now, and these are big. These are kind of the biggest types. It's it's strings, think words and phrases, list of characters, and think quotes. And numbers, uh, in integers are just whole numbers. So you type in a number, no quotes around it. It is a number, and that is a different thing than a string. Um, that is a different thing than a string. Um, so um, let's skip down. Let's skip down here from, uh, is there a limit to how big a uh, memory these types are? Absolutely. There is a limit. Um, actually, you know, what's funny. There's a limit. I know there's a limit because of Golang. There should definitely be a limit uh, for Python specifically when it comes to numbers. Um, when it, specifically when it comes to numbers, I'm actually not hundred percent sure how Python handles that. Um, we'll dive, we'll dive into that. That is a great question. Um, uh, yes. So uh, let's 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 jump over booleans for a second and go to floats since we're talking about numbers. So we talked about whole numbers. Now, what is, you know, we a whole number is a complete number like five or six. But what happens if there is a decimal point in there? So what is a five point three? 
<coughs> so, um, numbers that are not um, whole numbers, uh, they're decimals, so 5.376, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff here. These are floats, so whenever you think of decimals, think float. Um, yeah, floats are a different type from an integer. They are two different types. That's what you can see it right here. Um, they are not the same type. Now, you will see here, I'm gonna show you in a second, uh, some dynamic languages like Python, I think Python does it, um, Again, we'll infer these things and, and make them work nicely together. But compiled languages, if you have an integer, uh, generally you can't directly interact with a float. You can't combine them, can't add them together easily. Um, you, well, you can't always do it. There are, there are ways to do it. Um, some languages allow for it, some languages don't. But uh, they are different types and it's important in your mind to whenever you see a decimal, think float. Whenever you see a whole number, think integer. Whenever you see quotes, think string these are the these are three different types here um let's go back here um and let's hop back up one let's go for um let's go for the boolean section so boolean very simple um boolean is true or false and you'll use booleans a lot uh in programming and so we'll do class i actually don't know in python if it's capital or lowercase let's try it. okay so now true uh, type uh, type true is a boolean and type false is a boolean. Those are the only two things that are of boolean type, true or false, uh, yes or no. That's all there is. These keywords are, are true or false. If you do a, a lowercase f, we'll get an error because that is not a reserved word here. Uh, and so you couldn't even do true with lowercase. It's gotta be capital um, for it to work, uh, but you could make you can make these a string though. So let's say I wanted to use the word true. Again, if I wanted to make it a string and not be a Boolean, I could, I could put some quotes around it. Again, hammer it into your brain, quotes. Uh, quotes make it a string, but true or false is a Boolean. So whenever you hear Boolean, think true or false. Um, homework for class, look up integer overflow story. Oh, Boeing. Um, Yes, that is a really good one. I might add, I might actually throw that into the Google Classroom now. I like that. Um, there are some <coughs> there are some other pieces. So there's there's a lot of articles like that in the Google Classroom. Uh, that's really good. I like that. Uh, Energy overflow, Boeing. I really like that. I'll add that. Manager's not working. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a function that will convert floats into integers in order for them to work uh, with them mathematically. Great, great thinking. Yes. Um, so. Um, there's something called type casting or type coercion, type conversion, uh, where you take types and you can change them. You can change one type to another type. Uh, it, uh if, you know, if it's set up properly, uh, there are ways to change types from one to others. Um, and so there, I'll, I'll kind of show you some of that type casting and type coercion a little bit later. I like, man, you guys are, you guys are killing it. I love this. And I don't have to think as hard. I love that. Um, but yeah. Um, so that's Boolean. So let's let's run back down again. We're gonna we're hammering it in because th if this is the first time you're ever learning about this stuff, uh, this stuff can be overwhelming. So hammer it back in. The first type we're talking about is string. What's a string? A list of characters. Think words and phrases. Um, and how do you know it's a string? Think quotes. That is what a string is. Uh, maybe I should put list of characters in quotes. That would be nice. Um, integers, whole numbers. So um, whole numbers are their own data type. So numbers like four, five, six, they are integers. They are a data type. Numbers that have decimals. So 4.2, 4.3, 5.1, uh, numbers like pi, uh, 3.14159, that sounds right. I don't know. Um, those are floats, so decimal numbers. And then Booleans, Boolean just means true or false. Um, simple, that is a data type as well. Um, and so I wrote, I wrote arrays and slices here. So in Python, we're actually gonna be using uh, different types and we're gonna be going over those uh, pretty soon. But I wrote arrays and slices. Arrays are available pretty much in everything. Uh, and that's why I wrote arrays here. Slices are in Python. But in Python, we're gonna be doing things like lists um, and tuples um, and arrays. Um, but this is a 
an iterable collection of items. So I'm gonna do a list here. Um, what does an iterable collection of items mean? So iterable just means that you can move through something, that you can navigate through something. Um, so, um, and again, I said it's an iterable collection of items. So something like a list would be um, maybe a list of colors. So maybe there will be black, maybe there will be blue and Maybe there will be yellow. So this right here is a list in Python. Um, <clears throat> it's a list in Python. Again, not super important that you remember that I need these brackets here. Um, but you can see here, there are three different things in here. And what are they? There are three things that are of type string you see the quotes there that's how i want you to start thinking i'm going to ask you guys questions like that often they're of type string three things of type string um are in this collection um and i could iterate through this if i wanted to so because of the way this data type works um i can i can uh go through each item in this in this list i can move through each item in this list uh they are indexable uh we'll talk about um We'll talk about zero index. We'll talk about indexable things, but I can traverse this thing. So this is in a slot. It's really, even though it's the first slot, it's really the zero slot. And this is in the first slot and this is in the second slot, but I can move through this and I can use uh, the locations to do different things. I can, I can move through this iterable list. Um, that'll get less confusing later. It is okay to be confused by arrays or lists right now. Just know that there, there is a data type that is an iterable collection of items. So we can have one thing or we can have a collection of things and these are how we do collections. So this could also be something like uh, five comma six and comma seven. And maybe if I put, um, let's do a type around this. Well, let's see. Uh, five comma six comma seven. Let's see what type this gives us. Uh, this gives us a list. Um, and lists are generally uh, what we're, we're going to be using a lot of lists in Python. Um, we'll get deeper into those things. I don't really want. I didn't want to teach you lists and tuples and everything on the first night. I just wanted you to know that there was a way to have a collection. Uh, so a grouping of data types. So I could also have. It wouldn't have to be just that. I could still do something like um, like purple. So I have a number, I have a number, I have, um, so I have some integers. So we have an integer, then we have um, a string, purple is a string, then we have another integer, which is seven, and maybe we're gonna do false for it to have a Boolean. This is still a list. So in interpreted languages, not even interpreted languages, but in languages that are dynamically typed, I can have a collection like this. Um, in something like Go, in, in a compiled statically typed language, I would not be able to have a collection. I would, I would not be able to have a collection of things that are of different types. It would have to be a collection of all strings um, or all numbers. And again, there are some caveats. There are ways kind of around some of this stuff, but that is where the dynamic versus interpreted, um, the dynamic versus a strictly or statically type thing comes into play. Um, but this collection is a list um, in Python. But again, wh what's important is not that you know that it's a list, what is important is that you know that there are iter there's an there's an iterable collection of items that is its own data type. There are more data types in this. We will get into them later. These are the main ones I want you to know. So take a look at some videos, write these down. Write down a string, write down an integer, a float, a Boolean, and write down an array, right? Write down arrays. Um, a lot of the things about arrays apply to lists in Python. Um, and just kind of read up on them. If, you, if you're not too sure, if you don't really understand, definitely uh, definitely check that out. Um, don't worry about slices right now. We, we'll definitely get the slices, but don't worry about that. Um, cool, you can also, um, as a slice when you take a portion of the list, yes. So slices, I said don't worry about it, but a slice is when you have, when you have this collection, you have a collection of things, uh, a slice is taking a portion of that. So maybe I wanna take, uh, maybe I have, let me see if I still have it up here. A slice would be saying, hey, I have one, two, three, four things in here. Let's say I want to use uh, the last two. A slice, you could write um, a slice, uh, you create a slice that only takes the last two items 
or the two middle items or the first three items, but a slice is taking a portion of that collection. So that's all a slice is. Um, it's taking a portion of a collection. Um, that's all a slice is. <coughs> Um, does Python have characters? Um, that's a good question. Um, that's what's funny about that is, I don't know. Does Python have like runes? Um, if someone knows the answer to that, let me know. Um, Python character. What is it called? Strings and character data in Python. I I, I honestly don't know. Um, let's see here. What happens if I just type in, let's say if I type in, let's mess around a little bit. This is exciting. If I just type in H, um, it doesn't look like you can denote it from that, but this will be a string. Is there a special character that may denote a rune? Yeah, um, so, so far, I don't, um, it doesn't look like Python has characters. I've never, I think I don't know because I've never seen, uh, I, I've never seen characters um, be used as a type in Python. I've never seen runes or anything in Python. Maybe there is. Um, oh, it looks like um, Doug Muffin knows there's, it does not. Um, so it looks like the answer is no. And we can see here, we tried a couple things. We tried a couple different ways of seeing if we could get a different type, uh, but it is not. The full list of data types is actually coming next class. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I don't. I don't think so. I've never seen them. Uh, it looks like their answer is no. Um, cool. And so, another way we can um, hop into what this dynamic typing is. Oh, it's already ten fifteen. Man, how many are left? Oh, not that many. All right, cool. Um, dynamic typing. So types are evaluated at runtime. So again, back to the words that we learn. Run times versus compile time. In dynamic typing, types are evaluated at runtime. Therefore, type errors present themselves at runtime. So if you have some weird errors with your types, mismatched types, they won't you won't see them until you run the code. Um, but an interpreter may infer your types. Remember we talked about type inference? Oh my gosh, my mouse is so sensitive. Um, remember we said in, uh, type inference, I may infer your type in order uh, for your code to run properly. So in JavaScript, you can actually do five. What, what, what type is this? This five right here, you don't see any quotes. This is an integer. Um, and then you can actually add that to a string here, five string, and JavaScript will attempt to go ahead and do that for you. Uh, it'll go ahead and try to figure out what's going on here. Even though they're different types, it'll say, hey, I don't really know what you mean by this, but like, I'm gonna go ahead and stick those two things together the best way I know how. Um, let's do the same thing in Python. Let's see what Python does. Even though this is a dynamically typed language as well, it may do something different. So we're gonna learn about print next class, but to print, to kick something, actually, we don't even need to print. We can, in the interpreter, we can just do it. So let's do five plus five. That'll give us 10. Well, if we do five plus string five, yeah, Python's nice. So even though it's dynamically typed, even though it has dynamic typing, it will not let you do this. Um, it will not let you do this by by itself. Uh, one interesting thing you can do is someone asked if you could try to do some uh, type coercion and make it work. So I could tell Python to say, hey, try to convert this thing to a string. So I'm giving a little function here and I say, hey, try to convert this string five into an integer five, whoops int five, not string. So it's gonna take this string and it's gonna to attempt to, to convert it to an integer and that works. Um, so that's that's type coercion. That's how you can uh, change the type of something. Um, same thing if I did like, um, I could do the same thing on the other end, I believe. I think I could do string. Um, and now it makes 55 because it added the string five, the character, remember a string is a character, it made this five a character and it stuck those two characters together and made a longer string. So um, Python, um, Python is, although it's not as loose as JavaScript, and I can actually show you in JavaScript, um, if I do, <laughs> if I do five plus five, whoops. I do five plus string five. So even in JavaScript, the string five is the same thing. It'll give you 55. So dynamic languages, you can see here how um, it gives you some, uh, some, some weird, it doesn't give you consistent functionality. Uh, and this is why some people don't like 
<coughs> dynamically typed languages. This is the reason why some people love it because you can do things like this. Um, but yeah, um, let's go back to what was I talking about already? I already forgot. Um, dynamic typing, yes. Yeah. So it may try to do it, and that's why I put in here interpreter may infer type in order to get the code to run properly. In Python, we just learned that we cannot do that. Types are a little more important. Um, some types can work together, um, but those two cannot. Um, but yeah, dynamic typing, that would be the case. Uh, it's static typing, so we try to run something like that in Golang. The same thing, the same type of error we got in Python, we would get in a compiled language, but it would happen at compile time and not runtime. So before we try to run the code, we need to compile it. This is when we would get the error, the error here, and it gives us the error. It says, "Hey, I cannot convert five type string ignore untyped, but <coughs> type string to type int." So basically saying, "Hey, I know one thing's an integer. I can't convert this to make them work." Um, mismatch types here. Uh, so again, when someone talks about static typing, again, I used to always think like keyboard typing, I didn't know what people meant. Remember, data types, the data types that we talked about, strings, integers, floats, uh, booleans, and you know arrays, things like that. Um, this is what sta uh, static typing means. Types are explicit. You have to explicitly tell things what types are. There's no type inferencing here. Um, that is the difference between dynamic and type uh, and static. Again, you saw JavaScript evaluate this you saw even python didn't evaluate this um, but it is dynamic these rules are built in these rules are built built into python all right let's go a little further um need to move a little bit faster because i am tripping um this is a little chart to talk about uh ease of use or ease of readability readability for humans versus fast and efficient so the higher you get up on this axis means the language is super fast and efficient for computers. The higher you get up on the vertical axis means it's fast and fun for humans to write. So uh, languages like Ruby and Python and Perl are fast and fun for humans to write in JavaScript, um, but they're not incredibly efficient for computers. And you can see Ruby is like really not efficient. Python's a little bit more, Perl's a little bit more, JavaScript a little bit more up here. Um, but you can see things over here, they're super fast on computers. So C, C++, um, are incredibly fast for computers, but are not fast and fun for humans to write. C is very difficult to write. C++, a lot better to write than C, um, but still difficult to write. Um, not fast, not fun. Uh, but Java is where the Java's here and Go is here. So, uh, so that means Go, and that's why I like to use it for the DevOps course, uh, for, among other reasons. Uh, and that's because it's fast it's very fast and performant for computers but also it's fast and fun to write for people so it's a it's a great mix it's a compiled language that is also easy to write for for humans and java is a little bit below um i don't like java to be honest um it solves a lot of problems it's not it's nothing wrong with it i just don't i'm not partial to java but i just want you to be introduced to some of the languages everything up here is a interpreted language so these don't have a compiler you do not have to compile this code these languages have an interpreter all of these languages are compiled and again we talked about that efficiency interpreted and dynamically typed um compiled and statically typed cool <laughs> nobody likes java yes nobody yes nobody likes java uh here's a link um i'll pass this along to everyone just so if you want to check out, read up on some programming languages and just see what programming languages are fast and fun and see which ones are compiled versus which ones are, you know, uh, what they're good for. It's, it's, it's a good exercise to find out, you know, what's good about a language, what's bad about a language, things like that. Um, so I would recommend going through that list when you get a chance. Um, and then... What are we going to go next? Cool. So how do we even write code? So we, we're going to start to get into this. So... Um, we're gonna we're after i talk about i'm gonna really quick i'm gonna talk about text editors and ides and then if you need to go feel free to go um after that just list i want you to know what a text editor and an ide is really quick um but then anyone who can stick around um it looks like there's a lot of people still on we'll we'll hop into some of these ides i'll talk to you about why i like some and why i don't like some we're also gonna be doing some of this stuff next time as well uh but I'll, I'll start going over the, some of that stuff, and we can have a we can have our little uh, our arguments here to find out uh, why people like what, and we'll talk about those. But um, how do we write the code? So, what kind of code do we write? We write source code. How do we write this source code? We write it using a text editor. 
These text editors, all they are are programs. Again, they're very much like Microsoft Word or uh, or um, Google Docs or whatever. And they're just things to be able to, for you to be able to create a document. Uh, so you're basically gonna create a document or create a file um, that you can uh, put code into and you're gonna type in that code. Um, and that's what a text editor is. Um, uh, it just helps you edit text. Um, traditionally, text editors are pretty lightweight. Um, they might have a little bit of extra functionality in there. Uh, now they have a lot, but they used to be pretty lightweight. Um, but yeah, they just help you um, quickly be able to edit code. Um, and they, they add some functionality like syntax highlighting. They add some functionality uh, like uh, you know IntelliSense and auto-completion to help you write code faster. Now, what is an IDE as, a com as opposed to a text editor? <coughs> so an IDE is something called an integrated development environment. That sounds like a lot. Um, IDEs are basically um, text editors that have additional tools that make it easy for you to be able to develop code in them. So um, IDEs will have uh, traditionally have had things like debuggers, have had things like uh, custom IntelliSense, have had things, um, have had a lot of, um, of workspace items that were made for you to be able to work within a specific language uh, very effectively. It gives you all the tools that you need out of the box to work with a specific language. Generally, IDEs generally are language specific. So you would basically get an IDE that works for Java or an IDE that works for Python. Um, and we'll talk about some what some of those things are. Uh, there are IDEs again, that IDEs are extensible, so you can extend them to work with other languages, but um, that's traditionally how an IDE would work. Um, the, the lines are definitely blurred nowadays. Um, text editors, uh, most of the ones that are listed here um, have uh, some form of package management where people allow you to add in plugins to your to your text editor to basically give it the functionality of an IDE. So things like debuggers are already in there, um, but you can add all the things that you need to really give you all the functionality of an integrated development environment uh, so that you can operate with some code. Um, so. Uh, some of the things that we have here. So this one right here, this is a uh, VS code. We're about to hop into the VS codes website. Um, this is an open source um, tool by Microsoft. It's taken off since its release. Uh, it is most people you'll see doing stuff um, are using VS code. It's got, it's got to be the most popular editor. Uh, I mean, Vim probably still is just because of the machines that it runs on, but VS code is probably the, the, the hottest thing right now. It's gotta be, it, it, it didn't even come out that long ago, but um, it's, it's super hot. Sublime's a little bit older, um, well, a lot older actually, uh, used to be the hotness, Sublime 2 used to be the hotness, Sublime 3 is out, Sublime's cool. Um, it doesn't have quite the same ecosystem of plugins, uh, but it is fast, it's pretty quick. Um, opens up files super fast, uh, but again, doesn't have the same um, level of plugins, same level of support kinda, um, and, Sublime is a freemium model, so you can use it, you can evaluate it for free, um, but it'll give you this stupid pop-up that says, hey, like every time you try to save, like every like three or four times you try to save a file, it's like, hey, like you've been evaluating this, maybe you should buy it. And I think a license is like 90 bucks. I bought one years ago because I was using it um, and I just wanted to support the person, but like most people don't buy the license, but it is good. Sublime is good and I recommend checking it out. But um, I do think, I do, I, do, I do think on this list, I think Vim's the best, but v I think VS Code is the one that if you're just getting into this, that's the one that you should look at and that's the one that you should download because it's the, um, it's the it's it's the easiest one. So um, oh, oh so th I'll tell you why I didn't mention Adam in a second. Adam's good. Adam's okay. But I'll tell you why I didn't mention Adam. We're gonna look at Adam though. Vim. Vim is a modal editor that exists inside a terminal. So Vim uh, exists inside of this thing, and that's what. Um, Confuses some people. Um, most of the things that you need to do, the the navigation of it, uh, you can't use your mouse. Um, you have to do everything via the keyboard. Um, and again, there are a lot of modes and shortcuts. Um, so yes, the learning curve is high. But once you once you get your Vim foo going, 
Uh, Vim is phenomenal. It does everything. There, uh, there's a vast amount of plugins for it. A much harder to configure, much harder to configure than uh, VS Code, but um, it's great. People, people from like sysadmin backgrounds like it a lot because when you're managing servers and stuff, and you got to log into servers. Usually, Vim is the only editor. Vi or Vim is the only editor that you have available to you on um, on those systems. So that's why people kind of like Vim. It's you know, it's it's old. People love it. You know, I could throw emacs on here not throwing emacs on here uh jet brains i only do jet brains on here because um for python uh, uh pycharm community edition is still like so heavily used and it's really really good but jet brains is a company that makes ides for like all these languages um and they're, they're they make they do make good products i'll give them that they make good products you don't really need their ides uh, until you get kind of working on like really good and you're working on bigger projects. Um, yeah, but um, we'll, we'll check out PyCharm. It's really good. Um, but JetBrains stuff costs money. Um, PyCharm does not. PyCharm, the community edition is free. Uh, and that's why I put it on here. But um, their stuff costs money, but it is good. It, it's good stuff. Um, Notepad++, um, kind of your old school Notepad editor. Really good. Has some, it's pretty basic, um, but really good. Um, that does exactly what you wanted to do. Gives you some good uh, syntax. I mean, uh, code completion. Not code completion. Um, highlight syntax highlighting uh, that might help out. But Notepad plus plus is a good one. Now there is one called Adam. Uh, we're gonna go to these websites really quick um, because I didn't give Adam any love on here. Adam editor. Adam is one that's created by GitHub. I cannot recommend Adam for a single reason. And that is in all of my work. Um, if you ever have to open up uh, a workspace, if you ever have to work, open up a folder with a bunch of files or large files in it, Adam is so slow. It is, it is painfully slow to open up files, especially big files. like. I, I, man, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe, I mean, maybe I'm a impatient millennial, but like Adam is so slow. Like it's, it's very good. It's a beautiful editor. Again, it was built by GitHub. Uh, we'll talk about Git and GitHub, but man, I've never had it. Like it, it looks pretty. It works well. Once, once you're like got the files and stuff open and you're typing it in there, it's great, but man, it is slow. It is, Ooh, it's rough as someone who especially who uses them now like ah oh, adam's slow man but you should i mean again i think everyone should check out all these especially if you're new to this like part of your homework for the week is to check out these uh check out these editors like check out some of them but i'm gonna bring up all the sites and i'll paste in all of the stuff here so vs code again Created by Microsoft, open source, it works on everything. So as soon as you go to the website, it should give you the package that you need for your computer. Uh, Sublime. Ah, uh, that was dumb. Should have typed in Sublime Text. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so Sublime Text been around for a while. Sublime is pretty fast, um, but again, it doesn't have quite the ecosystem of plugins that either Atom or VS Code does. Um, what else did we have in here? We had oh yeah, JetBrains. Let's pull them all up real quick. Do a little, yeah. So JetBrains is generally for they say for professionals, um, but they have a bunch. So they have like they have one for each of these. So like you can't really see that, but things for like Go. So they have one called GoLand for Go and uh, ReSharper. I think it's for C Sharp and Ruby Mine for Ruby and PyCharm for Python and GoLand. But Python uh, PyCharm is what you're gonna want to grab. I've heard really, really good things about PyCharm. Um, but I don't think you need it out of the gate. I think it's going to be confusing to use this out of the gate um, because of the way that you have to set up a project, etc. But I do want you to, as you're going along, I want you to download it, have it on your computer, but I want you to evaluate it um, later when you get a little bit farther along. Um, but yeah, PyCharm's good. Again, Sublime's great. I love, like I said, I, I purchased Sublime. Um, I bought it, uh, I think it's, was it $80 now? Um, I bought it a long time ago, so I have a key for it, but I don't, I haven't used it in years. Uh, it's good. It's, it's fast. It's just VS code is just VS code is that good. I, I really hate to taint the waters here, but VS code really is that good. Uh, it is the only editor that I have installed on my computer besides, um, 
Yes, code. So let me say, let me go into um, documents. Let's go into mastermind. Let's go into the mastermind.io website. Uh, so Visual Studio Code, I'll open up VS Code. Um, it has a good, comfortable interface here. And my files are off to the left over here. And you know, I can click on it, it opens up here. It has some good syntax highlighting. If I want to install a plugin, I go right here and I could type in like Python and I already have Python installed. But let's say I want to install this Python extension. I don't know what it does, but maybe I want to install this. All I do is click install and I get new functionality just like that. So um, this is why people like VS Code. It's super nice. Um, you can do some cool things like um, remote editing. So like I can create a server right now, uh, right in here, a live server and share it with you and we can edit um, the same code base at the same time. So we can do some, again, we can do some mod programming and some pair programming uh, over the over the web, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cool functionality that comes out of VS Code. Um, but I, I use, um, I use Vim. So if I was actually in the editor, because I like to stay in the terminal, I mean, um, I have my, but I have my Vim um, set up to do a lot of different things. So I use NerdTree, so I can, you know, I can open up files like this and um, I don't know, you can, let me see what's in here. You can see how it looks very similar. Um, yeah, there should be something in here. Um, but yeah, it's a modal editor. Um, so I'm in different modes. So right now, if I was to start typing, nothing would happen uh, to, to, you know, to, to be able to type, I have to go into insert mode and you can see at the bottom here, now I'm in insert mode and now I can type. And unless I'm in insert mode or um, either insert mode or pin mode, I can't type. And now that I've done that, um, you know, I can save it or get out of it, but I can't just like X out of it because of the way, you know, the way it is. One of the most searched things on the internet is how the heck do I quit Vim? Like once you're in Vim, how do you get out of it? And um, it's interesting because the way out, I can, it, you have to give it a command. You, you, it's a modal, you gotta, you gotta get it into command mode basically. And you know, Q is to get out, but I try to get out, but it says, hey, like, no right since last change. That just means you haven't you, you made some changes. I made these changes up here, but I didn't say I didn't save anything. So if I don't want to save it, because I don't want to save it, I just add a I add an exclamation point and that gets me out of it. Um yeah, so it's really you can see here how there's a learning curve, like because again, to start typing, I had to, you know, know to get into insert mode and how do you get into insert mode? You have to type I to get into insert mode, but you can do cool things like copy and paste. So copy and paste, I can go into visual mode. So you can see everything down here tells you now I'm in visual mode and I can yank it and I can paste it, paste it, paste it, paste it. Um, so I can do stuff like that or I can delete the line by just, you know, hitting D twice or um, there's just so much you can do once you learn the shortcuts. Um, Yes, I love that someone else knows about Shift ZZ. I can't tell you how many people know, um, don't know about Shift ZZ. That's how I save and exit. I use Shift ZZ, but I don't want to save any of these files. Um, but yeah, Vim's Vim's really good. Uh, again, the learning curve is pretty high. I'll, I'll give you guys the Vim Adventure stuff next time. Um, I'll give you the Vim Adventure stuff next time so you can kind of get into it. But if you're starting out, if you are starting out, do not use Vim. Like, do not. I want you to focus on learning how to code in Python first uh, and not really worry about Vim. So I recommend downloading, again, Visual Studio Code. Excellent product from Microsoft. It's really, really good. Um, you can just type, you can click around and you can type in here. No problem, you don't need to go into different modes. Uh, or you can you can enable Vim key bindings. So, do I have to, is it an extension? Yeah, so if you wanna like, get a little taste of both. You can install Vim key bindings and so that you have to go through modes and stuff in VS Code. But go ahead and try to install that if you can. Um, am I gonna talk about and how to use virtual environments down the line? Yes, but that will not come until uh, closer to the end. Uh, Python virtual environments can be pretty hectic. And uh, again, the goal right now is to focus on learning how to code. We will absolutely talk about Python virtual environments though because uh, it's annoying. Um, Electron is somewhat garbage. It is, it is. Electron is somewhat garbage. I like Electron because I'm a Linux user um, and that allows more tools to be able to come to Linux a lot easier. 
um, because people generally don't create for Linux. So that's a place that I like Electron, uh, but it is, man, it's not performant at all. Uh, One Dark is the best color scheme, changed my mind. No, Monokai is the best, uh, is, is always the best. Uh, some type of, any form of Monokai is the best co color scheme. Um, I changed your mind by just opening up them. Uh, I mean, by just opening up any of this stuff and it's the best. And you know, if we want to open up some Python, let's, let's create a, uh, let's see what Monica looks like. Oh, I did not mean to save that. That's fine. No big deal. How do I open up a new file? I don't know what I'm doing. New file. Um, I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it. Oh, I didn't even let me save it. Let's go with, um, hello, hello world. Um, save is it? Gonna, yeah, we're going to go. I'm gonna call it, um, test.py. Look at those colors. Look at those Monica colors. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I can do, uh, while, uh, I is less than, oh man, it's so beautiful. Let's just look at all the colors. Uh, if, oh man, it's beautiful. Monokai is the best. I think this is Monokai. It might even be Monokai. Yeah, it's Monokai Pro. Monokai is the best color and I'm very happy about it. But in Vim, uh, my Vim color is not, my Vim color is one dark, I think. Um, let me see. I'll tell you right now what it is actually. Uh, slash dot, uh, Vim. Um, slash color. Uh, my color is one dark. Yeah, my color scheme is one dark. So I do like one dark, but I do prefer Monokai. I do not like the Vim uh, implementation of Monokai and I'm too lazy to change mine. And I'm too lazy to change mine, but it's pretty. It is, it is, one dark is pretty, but I, I do prefer Monokai color schemes <coughs> uh, for sure. When you guys get deeper into your coding, when you guys get deeper into your into your coding craft, man, you will spend way more time than you want to trying to figure out the colors of your editor and like all that stuff, all your settings, all the things that make you faster. Uh, man, it's it is a it's a rabbit hole. It can definitely be a rabbit hole uh, for sure. Um. You know what my absolute favorite thing about Python is? The quick one line HTTP servers, uh, Python M HTTP server. You know what's funny? Because I use uh, Python mostly for scripting, I did not know that was a thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, can I just, I don't have to import anything with this. I can just, I need to vim server.py, I'll paste this in. That seems, oh, never mind. Uh, I don't even do that. That was like a, a command. Um, how do I do this? I want to know more about this uh, one line HTTP server thing. Uh, let me do, maybe I was right on the Vim server.py. Uh, Python 3. Ignore everything I'm doing. Ignore everything. <laughs> everything. Um, import. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just messing around right now. Um, all right, we'll figure it out later. Maybe you told me a little bit lower, but I don't. I didn't know about that. Um, I didn't know about that server. Um, the Python has server because again, I, I mostly use it for scripting. Um, I don't use Python for much more than scripting. I, I built. I built tools with it and stuff. But uh, yeah, shift yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm man. I'm way. I'm way. We scroll down. I'm way too far up. You must have quite uh, a wife running boot camps four nights a week, along with all the work you plan and prep. Um, my wife is amazing. Uh, yes, I do. Um, what does help, though, is my wife is actually in a nutrition master's program. So she is busier than I am. Um, so um, also, we do work. Um, she doesn't work full time. She works part time, but um, we do work in the same building. So um, I do get to see her pretty. I mean, I get to see her fairly often. 
Um, but she, I mean, again, we're both busy right now. Sometimes she stays here and works while I'm doing stuff. All the prep we try to do together uh, as well. Like I said, we, we, we're both kind of grinding at the same time, but yes, she's super supportive. She's great. I'm gonna get her on here. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna try to do a series, uh, when she's done with, uh, when she's done with school, uh, she finished up with school this year or master program this year. Uh, I actually want to do a series of trying to teach, like trying to teach her how to code. Like I really would love to like go through the process of getting her to learn how to code, but, um, now nah, she's she's definitely pretty dope um and i do i do appreciate her for allowing me to do this and supporting me in this for sure um but i'll, I'll get her on here i'll definitely get her on here for sure uh when are we doing socket programming in python um pr probably not in this one i, I mean that's very interesting um Maybe I'll add in some socket programming into the intermediate course that we're gonna run after this. Uh, that would be interesting. I'll get a little bit deeper. Um, I thought you'd pay for Monica. You, you do have to pay for Monica Pro. It's, this, it's the same freemium model as um, Sublime. Every time I save something, or like every time I get into it, it's like, hey, pops up. It's like, hey, thanks for evaluating this. Do you wanna buy it now? And I'm like, I want to support you, <coughs> but your PayPal stuff says that it's in euros. And I don't trust it. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I also don't use VS Code that much anymore. Um, so if I started using it again, I'll definitely pay for it. I generally, I generally pay for anything that I like that people are using. That they want me to pay for, I'll pay for it. Um, I, I do like to support uh, the developers. Um, let's see. Not putting a semicolon at the end is going to kill me. Uh, yes, it is going to kill you. Uh, um, I'm. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it is going to kill you. Not having to put semicolons uh, can be frustrating when you're coming from JavaScript uh, or other, or other languages. Uh, we had a semicolon, um, so it's funny because things like Go and stuff like Python probably the interpreter probably inserts them. They're there. They're probably there when the when the machine runs the stuff. But um, it just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for you. The source code itself doesn't need the semicolons at all. I used to spend five to 10 hours uh, before even learning how to code, deciding on color schemes. <laughs> yes, the color schemes are super important. I'm, 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 I love, like, you can see here by my desktop, like, I care about the way you, I, I personally am more productive if my workspace is attractive, like it just, I just am. So I spend time making my stuff beautiful. I think it's beautiful. If you don't think it's beautiful, I'm sorry, but it, it is, be again, this is another time I'm gonna speak in absolutes. If you don't like it, you're wrong. You go wrong here. But you can see here I have my clear bar up top and uh, this come, this looks actually much different out of the box. Um, so I've customized it, you know, with my color schemes and I'll do, a, I'll, I'm willing to do an entire stream to show people uh, how I got this set up and how you can get this set up um, as well. Um, just because I like this stuff so much. Um, that's why I know how long I've Android customization takes hours. Yep. Uh, what can you make with Python? Um, <clears throat> um, so you can make just about anything with Python. Again, it's a general purpose language. Uh, a lot of people use it for scripting. Again, it's really used heavily in uh, machine learning, uh, data science. Um, you can write web applications you know, using fr frameworks like Django, um, and Flask. Um, again, you can do just about anything. Again, there's there's web applications, there's um, there's machine learning stuff, scripting, uh, tools. Uh, you can use it for almost anything, which which is why people love it so much. Um, pretty simple to write, a lot of use cases for sure. Um, nope, you can just run it from the terminal. Uh, I tried to run, I ran it from the terminal. Maybe I need to run, uh, oh, what happened here? F, H, did I close it? Control, find, control, R, HTTP. Nope. I'll copy and paste it. I'll try it. I'll try it again. Um, Python 2 is something like, I'll go back up and find it and I'll run it again. Oh, it's right here. Take that, paste it in. It's on Python three. Oh, whoa! All right, I didn't know that. We're gonna have, we are gonna have some fun with that. I didn't know that. Um, is it just serving? Is it serving from this directory? Like, if I would just throw something in here, is it serving from this directory? What happens if I actually go to? Uh, I cannot see localhost. And I can't, I'm told you I'm a terrible 
I'm a terrible typist. I'm gonna get way better this year. You guys can be like, dang, look at that guy. He's typing in a hundred words. Oh, ho, ho. <coughs> this is phenomenal. I didn't know about this at all, and I love it. And I'm gonna do some cool things with this. Um, just to mess around, this is gonna be cool. Thank you for showing me that, I appreciate that. Uh, here's a terminal I'm using. It's available on Windows Mac and, oh, never mind. That's, that was dumb. Um, which type of Linux is this? Yeah, this is Pop! OS. It's from a company, uh, let's go to their website. This is where I got my laptop from. So the, the desktop I'm using is a custom built desktop. Um, if I if if I could use Linux full time, I would. Um, I much prefer Linux. I the only reason, honestly, right now that I don't use Linux is because I play a lot of games, and uh, right now video editing is not amazing on Linux. Um, and I'm gonna be I'm going to be creating lots of videos this year, so um, I couldn't fully make the switch. Um, I may give uh, DaVinci Resolve works on Linux now, so I may give I may give it a go. I may dual boot my main rig since my main rig is so powerful. But the only, that's the only reason I run Windows. Um, I much prefer Linux. I run Linux on my work laptop. I run Linux on here on my personal laptop. But they make um, I don't know. They make some um, cool stuff. They actually make their own desktop hardware. Um, I don't have one of their desktops, but I'm thinking about picking one up because um, I think that would be cool. Um, like they have open source hardware, which is interesting. Uh, but their laptops, I have this, the Galago Pro. Um, the darter looks pretty cool, it's 15 inches instead. Uh, they got some crazy stuff, like the adder has like, you can get like a 2080 in there, and um, you can get a bunch of stuff in all these, um, which I would, I would check them out. If you're if you're interested in having a, a kind of a, a Linux laptop or a Linux machine that just works uh, for someone who likes Linux like me like I don't need to work I, I don't I don't have to worry about upgrades or anything like that because again they have a dedicated team of engineers who creates firmware and stuff that make sure that their stuff works they're pretty dope I, um, and I love Pop! OS so even if you just want to try out Pop! OS on your computer it works really well um, especially if you have an NVIDIA card and you're setting up Linux um, I'm telling you, I've never had a better experience installing Linux on something with with NVIDIA drivers than I have with Pop! OS. Um, they basically have just this one right here that works really well. It is, uh, it's top tier. It really is top tier. Um, I will check it out. Um, let's see, disable path link limit. Should I do that? Install Python. I don't know what that is. Um, Cool. I like Manhara Linux. I don't hate myself enough. Uh, start from bear, arch it up. Manhara, Manhara is great. Uh, Manjaro, or Man, I call it Manharo. Uh, arch is Arch is great. I really like Arch, but I'm. It's it's crazy the the path you take. Like I used to be super deep in a like I'll build that up from scratch. You got to be an Arch user. All this, man. Not anymore. I'm like yo. I just need something. I need something that works that's going to be reliable for me just because I because I now do stuff like on my computer to, you know, uh, to manage my life and help me survive. So like I just want it to work. I really just want it to work. So um, this is this is as good as you're going to get in the Linux world. Um, System 76 is about as good as you're going to get. I've tried the like Libre computers. I tried one out for a little while. Cool, but um, not just not this not the same level. I I. I don't know. System 76 is dope, and I will be purchasing more of their items um, whenever whenever I feel like this Ultrabook isn't is no longer good for me. And I actually think I actually think just now in 2020, like right now, they they basically just uh, use like Clevo and Sager, uh, like Chinese laptops, and kind of repurpose them for this. Um, I actually think they're starting R and D right now in January 2020 <coughs> on their own custom stuff. So we'll see. I'm interested to see how that goes. I run Ubuntu VM on my Windows, so I can still play games. Yep. Um, when I'm on, when I need to do work on, on Windows, I actually just work out of the Windows sub subsystem for Linux. I think it's pretty dope. Um, one day I'll I'll figure out how to switch my like I have a Stream Deck over here. I'll set up my scenes so that I can switch back to my um, Windows PC up here in case I want in case I want to show you my setup there. Um, I play with getting GPU pass through working in in uh, Proxmox. I've seen some interesting Proxmox setups. You get it working against OP for sure. It is, yeah, it's not super easy to use. Pop OS easy to use? Absolutely, it's very easy to use. Um, I just want my OS to work. I'm not trying to, yes, exactly. You just want it to work? I'm telling you, if you, if, if you want to use Linux, like Linux isn't for everyone, but 
Um, if you want to use Linux, um, everyone thinks Linux is this crazy operating system. Linux is just like anything else. Look, I have Chrome. I have Slack. I have Spotify. I have Notion with all my notes in here and stuff. Like, it has all the things. I have Deluge so I can um, do some torrenting i have skype like i have steam here like everyone thinks linux is this like crazy thing when it's not um the reason i like linux is uh one and the custom the customizability and i can keep my skills sharp i like to i i like to manage my computer through the, through the terminal just because i'm comfortable with it i like to be able to copy my files around do backups things like that um but Ah, someone just put it in there. Adobe Creative Cloud is the only thing keeping me with Windows. That is what's keeping me with Windows now. So I just stopped my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. Just stopped it. Um, I'm buy, I'm 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 evaluating DaVinci Resolve. Um, I do use I know how to use GIMP and Inkscape so I can replace Illustrator and um, and Photoshop. But uh, DaVinci Resolve does work on Linux, but it's only uh, they only make an installer for a custom version of CentOS. Uh, with a very specific NVIDIA driver. I don't have an NVIDIA GPU. I have, oh, on this computer, I don't. I have uh, the Radeon 7 or whatever on this one because I wanted to move to DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to give DaVinci Resolve a try. If it works uh, well, if I can get, get into it, then I'll move. I'll, I'll try it on Linux. Um, but I might have to end up back at Adobe Premiere because I do like the Adobe. I mean, the Adobe Suite is it's good, man. If you need to create content, it's 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 good. Um, let's see. How do I join the Google Classroom? If you are subscribed, the uh, as soon as as soon as I sign off here, I'm gonna copy and paste into Twitch to send out emails uh, for the Google Classroom. Um, that's how you get in uh, to the Google Classroom. It'll send it'll send you all the instructions to get logged in. Um, but it'll happen right at, it'll happen right after this. Um, don't sweat it. The stuff's not like do tomorrow and like it's not going to take the the first day stuff is not going to take you long at all uh i think one issue with linux is the file system i like i actually like the linux file system uh, i'll be interested to hear why you don't like that adobe creative cloud is the only thing yep two or three apps for windows um lightroom yeah i get it if you can't move like i get it um that's why i just use i use everything i use literally i have a i have a mac um I have a Mac. I use I use Linux and Windows. Probably use Windows. Well, I probably use Linux the most because I use uh, Linux on my work laptop uh, as well. Um, but I kind of use them all. Uh, they're all they all have their their strengths and weaknesses. But I would if I could get those apps in Linux. I Linux would be my choice um, for sure. Um. HBO uses DaVinci Resolve on CentOS. Yeah, I just, I, I don't want to install CentOS to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm talking Linux scares. We open up a terminal and don't know any commands. Uh, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Like when you, when you first install it, like you'll be surprised at like, it, it kind of looks like this when you start it. It's just uglier because it doesn't have the same uh, themes and stuff that I have on here. Uh, it doesn't have the cool icons that I have, but it looks like this and it's pretty user friendly. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, here's where my eyes start to cross. Yeah. What's Notion? Notion is a life change for me. Notion is an app. Uh, it's for notes. So it's like Evernote. Um, but what you can do is, um, I don't know the way you can set things up is like, so one, you can set things up like, um, like Trello in here if you want, but let's go like if you want to take notes and stuff like you can like do these cool notes and like it's got like markdown and you can set them up so i was thinking a long time ago i was taking some like python notes and i think i updated it relatively recently but like you can just the way you can like look at that i can put the cool picture at the top and like i can put code sections here it's really it's a really good note taking app like really good note taking app um i love it i would check it out um i liked it because it was also had a linux client as well but um i would check out notion i think it's a, if you're an evernote user or you want something it's, it's it's pretty nice um show me the file system for pop os uh yeah so i think this is just nautilus i think um but it, by file system i don't know if you mean the file explorer or if you mean like uh like uh mean like like this, like this is what you want to see. I don't know. I don't know what you mean when you say I want to see the file system, um, but maybe these two things are maybe what you want. Uh, but yeah, Zorin's dope. Um, 
Linux for security reasons, yes. Linux for security reasons is great. Uh, did we learn the basics in Python today? No, we learned the basics of programming today. Uh, so things like data types, um, different data types like strings and integers and floats and um, and Booleans. We learned uh, like the difference between compiled and interpreted languages and dynamically versus statically typed. Uh, yeah, we just talked about some of the basics there, kind of what languages kind of did what. Um, we talked about a lot of that today. We'll we'll do the basics of Python next class. Next class again being Wednesday. Mac so Mac OS is based on BSD, which is similar to Linux. Yes, so Mac is Unix uh, based based on Unix. It's a Unix like operating system for uh, legal reasons. It has you have to say Unix like operating system. That's what it is. Um, but yeah, so it has a lot of the a lot of the commands and stuff are, are shared. Um, a lot of the way you do things are shared. <coughs> it's built off of a similar but kernel, but not the same. Um, but yeah, uh, so a lot of the, so if you have a Mac, uh, it'll be easiest to follow along with Linux if you don't want to hop straight into Linux. But um, yeah, um, how do I get started with the Python course? Uh, you just tune in. Uh, so we're again Monday. Look, uh, take a look at the schedule. We are Monday and Wednesday uh, for Python. So we'll be back on Wednesday with Python. Tomorrow we'll be working on some Golang stuff. Uh, actually, and I'll tell you this right now, even though I would love as many viewers as possible, just because I, I mean, I love interacting with everyone. But tomorrow will be for the DevOps course, uh, will be almost exactly the same as today. Uh, a little bit farther, but tomorrow is their basics, uh, their introduction to programming. Uh, a little, it'll be a little bit deeper, and a little, it'll it'll go a little bit deeper only because uh, compiled languages like Go have a, a few more caveats, a few more concepts that you need to know, but uh, it's basically the same as today. So if you're doing both courses and you wanna skip out tomorrow, understandable, uh, you know, save yourself some time, just go through the stuff in Google Classroom. Uh, but tomorrow will be very similar to what we're doing today. And then I think that's the end of the overlap. I think tomorrow is actually the end of the overlap. And then we'll start to really diverge in the two. Uh, what is DevOps? Great question. Um, DevOps is a methodology to, um, it's a methodology that is, um, really, uh, born to help, um, to help organizations develop, um, uh, software very quickly. Um, yeah, that's born out of the experiences of practitioners. So it's, it's basically, it's a way of building software. It's a, it's, a, it's an idea, it's a methodology, it's a way of doing things, um, a method of operation to be able to create quick feedback cycles um, and, and processes and pipelines so that developers can develop uh, code as fast as they want to. Uh, it's very interesting. It's enabled by tooling. So a lot of people think it's, it has to do with the tools, but yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a way to enable rapid development through automation, through infrastructure automation, as well as process automation. And that's all DevOps really is. Um, will there be syntax based things tomorrow? Uh, yes. I think there will be a bit of syntax things based uh, tomorrow. But again, tomorrow is a different bootcamp today. Tomorrow is not this Python bootcamp. Tomorrow is the DevOps bootcamp. This bootcamp uh, reconvenes on Wednesday. But yes, it, it, there will be some syntax based things tomorrow. Um, yes, the, if you are subscribed, there is a link to the Google Classroom. Um, and again, just for anyone who can't subscribe right now, um, I'm working on a way right now to be able to get everyone a subscription. Um, hopefully that pans out in the next week or so, so I can get everyone in the Google Classroom. Um, but yes, the Google if you are subscribed, um, the Google Classroom link will go out as soon as we sign off uh, here. Uh, Mac OS fully Unix compliant, hasn't been since like Leopard. Yep, um, Mac also switched from, just switched from uh, Bash to ZSH as a default shell. I have some gripes with that. So if you have a newer Mac, um, you might be using ZSH instead of Bash, and that's gonna cause lots of problems, not, not lots of problems, definitely not lots, but it will cause some problems as we dive into some of that stuff moving on, but I'll bring that up as it comes along. Uh, looking forward to the DevOps course, but stumbling around a crappy Jerry Jenkins Docker setup. Yes, uh, we'll, the, I, I'm actually, after running through the DevOps one once already, um, I'm excited. I'm so excited about the DevOps one. We cover so many different things um, and hopefully it helps a lot. Uh, where's the link for subscribers? It should be in the top right. If you're on mobile, I don't know where it is, um, but it should be right in the top right um, if you want to subscribe. 
Um, if if you are having trouble, like I said, I'm gonna send out the link right after this. Uh, after I sign, like probably in the, in the first five minutes after we sign off, I did, I did the same thing last night. If you don't get it or you're having trouble logging in, message me on any of the platforms, so on any social media or in the Slack, pr preferably, or here on um, here on Twitch, you can like whisper me or whatever it's called, um, and we'll get you we'll get you all sorted. Um, we'll get you all sorted if you can't get in. Um, let's see. Ooh, 11.02. All right, I'm going to sign off in a second. Big Boo Bucket using my last shop. Is DevOps Bootcamp and Python Bootcamp grouped together on Slack? Um, as of right now, they are. Um, I would like to make dedicated channels for each one. Uh, somebody feels like making one. Um, you can't you feel free uh, to call it like DevOps 2020, January 2020, so we know which one it is. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we will we'll probably just make some of the channels, but everyone's in the same Slack. Um, and again, there is a discord now just for people who are subscribed because there, there's a surprising amount of subscribers now um, that will get some priority questions um, answered in there. So um, I'll get I'll get everyone I'll get everyone set up with that. I'll have more information on Wednesday. Um, I'm just I'm new to the to the discord game and uh, I. I, I wrote down the people who said they were going to help me. So you better help me. You said you were going to help me. I want, I need that help. Now I appreciate, I appreciate that. If you can, that would be great. What's up time of this machine? Um, I don't know. Um, 23 hours. Um, it actually died. It, it did this weird dying thing earlier. Um, I, this, this laptop dies all the time. Cause I like kick out the power cord on accident. So it dies a lot. Um, I don't know. Um, Discord link. I <laughs> I don't even know how to give that to you right now. Again, I'll get it to you by Wednesday. I'll post it in the Slack <clears throat> if I can. A bunch of people found it already. Again, I don't even know how they did that, but a bunch of people found it already. I, I guess if you're a subscriber, it, it shows up in some kind of integration between Twitch and Discord. I have no, I'm, I'm going to learn. I'm, I promise you, I'm going to learn. Um, uses, um, Red minus the Jira. Yeah, I mean, Jira's cool, but there's a lot of stuff that's cool. I'm a Raspberry Pi. I uh, died with 938 days of uptime. The SD got, got corrupt. Dug muffin. That would have hurt my heart. Um, I would have really needed to see it get to the to the thousandth day uh, for sure. Highlight over channel and a little human with a plus icon. That's how you make a link. And I don't even know if I'm logged in to let me see. Discord. Uh, okay, I will uh, invite people. All right, I'm not gonna share. I'm not gonna share the link. I'm gonna share the link on Wednesday. I promise you, I'll share the link Wednesday. I need to learn a little more because again, I do want the. I would like for this to be. I would like for the Discord to be subscriber only, um, and the Slack to be for everyone. Um, just so again, people can get specific thing a answered. I, I I do want some benefits for people um, who subscribe. Yeah, I did her. I was seriously upset. Uh, it survived on a UPS through a long power. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, cool. Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get out of here so I can get some sleep. Go home, see my wife. Uh, finish. I actually gotta finish eating my dinner. Actually, I pretty much finished it. Um, but thank you everyone uh, for another great stream. Thanks for the interaction. Again, um, take in if, if you can, you know, if you took any notes tonight, go back over them. The concepts are what really important. Don't worry about all the little things I was typing. Worry about the major concepts, the strings and the, the data types, the strings and the integers and the booleans and the floats. Make sure as I'm using these words, you know, in the coming weeks that you understand what those things mean. Um, watch a video or two about compiled versus statically, I mean, compiled versus interpreted languages. Maybe you can get a little more information, dive a little deeper so you can really understand the difference. Um, you know, typing static typing versus dynamic typing things like that read read that link that i sent about the different coding languages so you can know what you know what's powerful at what so you can know the difference between the two so you can be a little more informed about what languages do what um yeah, really start immersing yourself in this stuff. The more you immerse yourself in, again, you'll be confused. Uh, and you'll be like, whoa, there's a lot of information, but it's crazy how much you'll just soak up and how much later on in two weeks, someone asks you a question and you're like, oh, like, yeah, at the time when I was hearing about this, I didn't remember that, but now that you're asking about it, I read this about this and you'll have the answer for it. And that's amazing. But thank you all for being here. 
Have a great night. Anyone in the DevOps Bootcamp, I'll see you tomorrow. Pretty hyped about that. Um, if not, everyone else, I'll see you on Wednesday. Everyone have a great night. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll get. We'll make sure everybody gets in the Google Classroom this week. So uh, just reach out if you're having problems. Uh, keep an eye out for an email as soon as this is over. But everyone, again, have a good night. Thanks for stopping through.